Hey, it's 10 o'clock. Neil Rogers coming up next. The views expressed on the previous programs are those of the host, guests, and callers what and do not reflect those of the Beasley Broadcast Group, its staff, advertisers, or really agencies. You're listening to South Florida Sports Radio. 560 WQAM, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Am I right? You are correct. 560 WQAM presents the Neil Rogers Show. To talk to Neil, dial 5670560 in Dade and Broward. In other counties, call toll free 877-785-NEIL or pound 560 on your AT&T and Verizon wireless phones. The opinions expressed by Neil, his guests, or his callers do not represent those of WQAM management, staff, or sponsors. Now, the Neil Rogers Show on 560 WQAM. Neil God. First you get down on your knees, fill with your rosaries, bow your head with great respect and turn your flex, turn your flex, turn your flex. Do whatever steps you want if you have cleared them with the pontiff. Everybody say his own Kyrie is on doing the Vatican right. Step into that small confessional. They're the guy who's got religion. I'll tell you if your sin's original. If it is, try playing it safer. Drink the wine and chew the wafer. Two, four, six, eight. Time to transubstantiate. So get down upon your knees. Fiddle with your rosaries. Bow your head with great respect and genuflect, genuflect, genuflect. Make a cross on your abdomen. When in Rome, do like a Roman. Ave Maria. Gee, it's good to see you. Getting ecstatic and sort of dramatic and doing the Vatican right. Hey, happy Easter. Happy Pesach. All of this other uh, cockerai, man. So uh, thanks to Flea and Zach and even uh, Josh Cordes filled in yesterday. Yep. That's shocking because I haven't sent those checks out to him. In fact, Chris, I'll get around to it this weekend, I guess. Or maybe not. You know, times are tough. You do know that. Oh, yeah. Had a little bit of a uh, some issues here yesterday. Was not in a mental state. You know, my ears are still plugged up from all the stress and grief, you know. Even though everything is fine here now, my ears are plugged up. But it's still like from that cold I had last week. And maybe I know why they're plugged up. Maybe it's a, it, it happens automatically when I hear Ira Windbag on here. You know who he sounds like? <laughs> no, who? I'll give you an audio clue, okay? I'm a fat Jew. He sounds like Al Goldstein. Wow. Yeah, Ira Windbag. Kind of like a feminine Al Goldstein is what Ira Windbag sounds like. So it's not bad enough he's destroyed Mad Dog Show. Now we got him on in the morning with Joe. Oh, my God. He's everywhere. He is like... And I don't want to hear nothing about Michigan State getting tromped last night because I don't pay any attention to it. I don't really care. Even if they would have won by 100 points. I just don't care. I'm not going to pretend to care. I don't uh, follow basketball no more. Oh, that's bad, Neil. That's all we talk about now is basketball. And, of course, uh, that crap. I don't care. Not interested. Used to be a great sport. Now it's just crap. Wait till you hear this email. And Flea tells me that. See, one thing about the radio listeners of every station from coast to coast now, they're all paranoid. Because if somebody is out sick or is uh, missing for five minutes, oh, gee, they must have blown uh, somebody out, you know, like whoever it is, fill in the blank. Because of what's going on with all the radio stations now? When in doubt, blow them out. Before I get to this great email, though, so Flea tells me that another good reason for me not to be there is the fact that the, the tea room <laughs> has uh, had some problems this morning. Oh, it's nasty. Backed up, overflowed. And feces are out in the hall now. Floating as we speak. What a schmitty place, that's all I can tell you. <laughs> and so uh, Flea had to run down to Joe Bell's uh, private toilet, which used to be Greg Reed's private toilet, and he said there's some blowback in there, too, I guess. A little bit. A little bit of blowback? Yep. Oh, gross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wow. Anyway, here's an email from Gregory Watts. Subject, Unhappy Monday. Oh, some of you people, man, are just... And then you tell me that Clarence was getting emails yesterday. Oh, where's Neil? Did you guys fire him? Uh, yeah. yeah. Right? Yep. 
Hi, Neil. What a schmitty Monday I had, says Gregory. After many years of watching BBC News America every morning on BBC, I was so depressed when Bargain Hunt greeted me instead. Then at 10, I tuned in my radio to Uncle Neil, whom I listened to since 1986, instead with some sports holes that sound like they should have been on WKPX. So I guess they paid you off, finally, or whatever. Yeah, they paid me off. Hold your breath, Gregory. I live in Lorita near Sebring. Hadn't heard any Miami news on WQM changes. I hope to hear you on another station soon. I'll keep <laughs> checking your site daily for news. It's been fun, Greg. Oh, God. Get a life, Greg. Get a life. I have no life. Obviously. But what is wrong with these people? I don't know. I, I think what I'm going to do is maybe Greg won't tune in until about 10.15. Here's Flea again. And I barely talked sports yesterday. What did you talk about? What did you guys do for four hours to kill four hours? I talked about dumb guy stuff and a little bit of sports. Talked about opening day. Talked a little bit about the Panther game because I went opening on Sunday. Opening day that they didn't sell out, even with that new stadium coming? No, they didn't sell out. But a decent crowd, though. A decent crowd. That'll be it, though. Day. That'll be it for oh, the year. Oh, my God. Yeah, 34,000. I checked it out. Yeah. Blue Jays sold out. Wow. On a horrible day here, but, of course, they got the dome. You know, at the Rogers Center, they got that dome. And they won, too, 12-5. to 5. And the Marlins, the Marlins won. I noticed that Joe's all whipped up about the Marlins again. Can't say it, but he's all whipped up about it. The Marlins. Nobody cares. You know, again, trying to force-feed crap to people that don't care. It's like in the hallway they're trying to force-feed crap. <laughs> That's our middle name, boys and girls, at WQM. We're going to change the call letters to WKRP. Crap. Right. I guess they've done that already. Here's the poll result from, um, I don't know from when. I'm so backed up. Kind of like our toilets. Yeah. What's the most obnoxious thing some pet owners do for their pets? 854 votes on this one. Counseling by a pet shrink. That's what I voted for. 322. I mean, those people need to get themselves a shrink. Yeah, just give me the money. Hold pet weddings, 221. I never heard of that one. Pet weddings? No, I never have either. But 221 people evidently did because they voted for it. Dress them in sweaters, 130. Oh, little tiny, put a little sweater on little tiny. Put them up in swanky pet hotels, 60. Feed them exquisite food, 49. Give them cutesy or stupid names, 40. Give them funerals, 32. Tiny and Winnie never got a funeral. Not a shame. They're both still dead, by the way, my dogs. Oh. What a shame. Dogs should live forever. People should die, I don't know, about 66. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, brother. Here's our award wing schedule for Tuesday. We got the big O two to four. Oh. How long is that gonna continue, by the way? Not sure. But you're you're the inside guy. You're Joe Bell's good buddy. Yeah, I'm not completely inside though. When's the big O saying bye bye? We got Mad Dog at Augusta four to seven with that golf crap on oh, the Masters. He loves the Masters. Mm-hmm. <coughs> that should really help that one one. Then Dolphin tonight seven to eight and then eight to eleven D eight. When's he getting blown out? I don't know. He's a good guy, though. I, I hear he's a good guy. That wasn't the question, though. Oh. When's that uh, misery going to come to an end? And when are we getting our new stick? They're working on it, from what I hear. Well, look at all these emails. What the hell's going on here? Barry Jackass, Clarence Darrow, and Joe Zagaki were on with Mandich yesterday, it says. That's true. Doing what? They were doing the college uh, portion of the broadcast from a place we were doing a uh, viewing party for. So Jim would, Jim would throw it to Joe and uh, and Clarence, and they would talk a little bit about the uh, NCAA championship game. Oh, my God. They, they're just out to totally destroy. They're going to get him in the zeros pretty soon. He's close to it. Dow's down 173. Maybe the Dow can go in the zeros. Oh, and Steve White was on the ticket again this morning. Yes. So we still don't know who's going to be doing mornings? Well, you know, the rumor was Sedano, but now I hear he's uh, holding out for more money, so he's basically negotiating himself out of a job. I see. Well, what he doesn't understand is this business, there ain't no more money. Nope. Brandon says your mic volume during the open was very low. Yesterday, those first 15 minutes were very interesting. Hearing Flea say you were you were sounded down and then going into a sports rant, that's when I stopped. What? Hearing Flea say you were sounded down. Which what I never said. Mean? I didn't say that. I don't know. I said that well, you what, had to go. What does go. that mean? I was sounded down? I don't know. And then I guess he shut it off. Oh, uh, well. So at least he can't give you a, a critique on your performance yesterday. Yeah, we've got Ben Stiller in the pool twice today. 
Oh, and then it says, why not take a couple of calls? No. Did you take any calls yesterday? No, because we couldn't figure out how to get the phones to work. Good. I'm not taking any today either. Why not take a couple of calls? No, but we do need to get one of the Ben Stillers off today's poll. Sorry about that. And that's not our fault. That's whoever made the poll. I think Charlie B. Or, uh, I don't know, somebody. Yeah, and I added uh, Keanu Reeves to the poll. Oh, my God. Not that girl. She's from Toronto, by the way. She was born in Toronto. Really? Hey, tell whoever does the poll to remove one of two Ben Stillers, says Raul. Yeah, okay, we're on it. Just relax. Hey, do this, do that. Tell this one. Yeah, blow it out your ass. Smart ass. Brandon says, I wonder with all the toilets and the condition there, what would George do? That's what I was asking. He makes 30 trips during the show. Maybe the crap George is saying he's always... Maybe that crap is George is saying he's always making a drop. Good thing he's on vacation. What, what does that mean? I don't know. And here's an old picture from WGBS from 100 years ago. And I don't know who any of these people are. Oh, Charlie Kappas is on there. A young Charlie Kappas. Look at that. Rest in peace. Do you remember Charlie Kappas? You wouldn't. No. He was our uh, program director in a wheelchair at WNWS. I'm trying to think what Charlie had. I don't know what he had. I remember uh, toward the end there, he called me up at home and says, any, any idea where I can get a liver? <laughs> and it's a true story. He called to ask me if I knew where he could get a liver. And I, I just, you know, I don't know what to say. I said, no, I don't think so, Charlie. He was okay. He was a good guy. Never stole a freight train. Those are the days, WNWS. Do you remember W Snooze or not? Weren't you around those days? No, I don't think I remember it. Oh, boy. That was 790. Forget about this crap they got on there now. So Steve White was on again this morning. They got no morning oh. show across the street. And George Sedano, like you said, is negotiating himself out of a job. What a schmuck. Yep. What a moron. I wouldn't be surprised to hear him doing two to four on this station real soon. Oh, oh, Roger's got songs in honor of uh, Easter and Pesach like that. What's the Virgin Mary got to do with Pesach anyway? She's strictly for Goyim. 1018 at 560 WQAM. Here's today's poll. Which of these talentless, overrated actors makes you most ill to look at? You get violently ill just when you see them. 277 vote. Well, Will Ferrell, 53. Adam Sandler, 44. Oh, Adam Sandler? Mm. My remote moves so fast, it's on autopilot when he comes on the screen. It changes automatically. You like Adam Sandler? Uh, back in the day, when he used to be funny. When was that? About 20 years ago. <laughs> Martin Lawrence, 36. Ben Stiller has got... Absolutely. Got... About 30, man. Excuse me. Jim Carrey, 29. Kevin Costner, 24. Will Smith, 21. That's who I voted for. He makes me physically ill. I don't know what it is. Eddie Murphy, 11. Keanu Reeves, 10. That was your choice. It's a late edition. He's zooming up the... She's uh, from Toronto, Keanu Reeves. George Clooney, 8. Robert Downey Jr., 7. And Tom Hanks has got 3. That's today's poll on NeilRogers.com. I'm here. I don't sound too good today, do I? You sound okay. <clears throat> not, not, not 100%, good, though. though, no. No, I'm not. It's either a big combination. I still got a little of that cold from last week. had a nasty cold. Or the uh, stress from the weekend and yesterday. Oh, my God. Mexicans and booze, <laughs> hand in hand, man. It just—I don't know what that's all about. 
You know how some people drink water? Mm -hmm. That's how Mexicans drink booze. Not all of them, just most. Oh, Barry Jackass says, now that WYZ has flipped to sports, Ken Charles has evil David Letterman doing on-air teasers, taking shots at WQM in the ticket. Wow, how creative, Ken Charles. Evil Dave Letterman. Yeah, what year is it? God. Oh, sounding down is what I meant, says Brandon. So, yeah, I do sound down. I am down. Well, I'm, I'm doing better. I finally heard from Norma Kent. That's because I sent him an email. I got two uh, two replies because I changed my will twice Yeah, in the last two days. Changed it and then changed it back. You know how those things go, don't you? Kind of. Got to play Neil's will. Sounded down? Well, what does that mean? What does that mean, Brandon? Is that a shot? I'm doing the best I can under difficult circumstances. Now, let's see. What's the, which of these emails you you believe? Paul says, regarding yesterday's show, I was disappointed not to hear you yesterday, but the guys who replaced you were pretty damn entertaining. Go ahead, says Paul. Go ahead. And then we got these two. Go ahead. It says, hey, Neil, what was that crap on QAM yesterday? Mutt and Jeff on crack? Yeah, that's what it was. Mutt and Jeff on crack. <laughs> The crap is in the hallway, by the way. Frankie says, that thing they called a radio show was horrible yesterday. See, this is what these idiots don't understand, is that you guys filled the breach when I definitely... I couldn't have done the show. Mm -hmm. I could not have done that show. I, I was here, I mean, you know, I was here in the chair, but I couldn't it couldn't work. They can take shots at me, I'm not going to cry. Yeah, and, and, and you and the other guys filled the breach and killed the four hours and did whatever you needed to do to put a show on, and these people, oh, that was horrible, I don't think WVUM would have played that, it says. They wouldn't have played it. Wow. Next time you're out, just tell them to take off the signal so we can hear the Cuban radio station. I'm so glad you're back, says Frank. <laughs> That's for you, Frank. God, and then, of course, your program director there, Clarence, he came in before you did. And I'm trying to tell him that, you know, I just was ill and uh, down and um, needed, needed mental help yesterday, and he didn't care. It was only when Flea uh, showed up and I finally came back in here, and I said, you know, I th think I need you guys to do the show. Okay. Being the trooper that he is. You ought to be the PD, not that stinking Clarence, not that idiot who was screwing up Mandage's show again yesterday. I can't believe that. Him and Zagaki? Oh, my God. And if you think all of this is depressing, wait till you hear this news from the fake Tom Jicka. Steve Lappa is considering putting Bob Rubin on 640 WFTL. You know who Bob Rubin is? No. That, that's because you haven't been around a hundred years. He's a stodgy old. He's got to be a hundred years old. He's a stodgy old former Herald sports writer. And Steve Lapp is considering putting him on 640. W doesn't make any difference because he can get a oh, point oh. like like Mifo had or whoever else they got on. This is the new age of radio stations that have oh, shares, oh, zeros, oh, and wait till that uh, PPM starts. The end of uh, whenever, end of next month. No, it started. Well, what do you mean it started? They're doing a diary and a PPM, like, simultaneously. It started already. Well, how does that work? They give you two results. Well, how's that going to affect the winter book? No, it won't affect the winter book. It won't. So what do you mean it's already started? The winter book is... What is, language are you speaking? Well, the winter book, you know, is the basically done, which comes out on the 30th, right? 30th I of uh, this month, yes. The meter actually started on Thursday the 2nd, I believe. Oh, my God. Yeah. And they're, But they're doing diaries and meters together for the first couple of months. Well, the people that have the diaries don't also have the meters. Are they different people? Different people, correct. Oh, I see. And when are we going to get the results of that, or don't we? Is that just we get the first result on May 21st. And and what what is that result going to mean? Is that a binding result, or is that just a... Um... No, it's not a binding. It's just a, hey, here's your information. And then I think in July is when it's binding. July? Maybe, yeah. Maybe we get our first real, like the diary goes away, the first real PPM thing will be in like June or July. And what about the uh, bonuses? On uh, They're going to be on a monthly basis now instead of every book? I think it's time to renegotiate the contract a little bit. They have to get an addendum. Yeah, because it comes out every month now. It's not a quarterly book. That's correct. That's right. No, yep. I'm not renegotiating anything. It just is uh, ratings bonuses. There you go. Whether they like it or not. Not, not that there's going to be any, although we do have a shot in the winter book. We're doing okay in midday. Men 2554. We got a six or a seven share going into the third, uh, the last part. It's not too bad, huh? No, not at all. 
Especially if anybody could hear the damn signal. Can you hear me? Hello? You know, like that. And at nighttime, poor D.A., who is a good guy, boy, he, he ought to sue them or something. I don't want to plant any, you know, ill will, but they bring him in. He follows an absolute, every time he comes out, he's following dead air. Dolphin and I and Bo Camper is like indescribable. And he's got no signal. Nobody can hear it at night. No. When you put those two things together, it basically adds up to a oh, point. Oh, oh. What's the point? Why not just have him sit at home and uh, give him a paycheck? You know, he could mumble a little about sports from the house. He could call in from his Blackberry like I did the show a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Remember that show? I do. How long did that go on? For about two hours or something? Seemed like an eternity. Mm-hmm. And then finally the green lights came back on the tello and said, Oh, we're back! We're back! Oh, my God, that was... That was more exciting than if they would have cleaned up. Now, is somebody cleaning up the hallway or what? Not that I've seen. Not that you've seen? No, it's still so bad. So there's feces in the hall and nobody is attending to it? Correct. I might go run through it and slip and fall and hurt myself <laughs> so I can sue. <laughs> oh. I could use the money. Yeah, slip and fall. Do you know that there are people... I had a friend in Detroit who used to have this uh, couple who were friends of his. I didn't know them. But that was their, the way they made money. They would do a slip and fall. They'd go into a supermarket... And they would like, you know, they'd have like in their pocket, they'd have like a wax paper thing with mayonnaise in it or something. And while nobody was looking, one of them would smear it on the floor. And then they'd come waltzing down the aisle and whoop, slip and fall, lawsuit. Kroger's, I think, was the, I'm not really sure what the food, but it didn't make any difference. Wow, the Kroger's. food chain. Yeah. And they kept suing. And, of course, you know, the supermarkets, they'll, they'll settle right away because they don't want a big lengthy thing and have pay millions out. And they would do a fake slip and fall. Of course, I don't know how you do a fake. I mean, what happens if you do a real slip and fall and break your neck or something? More money? <laughs> the Dow is down 151 points. And there's that simpleton, Rob Marciano on CNN, talking about the earthquake in Italy. It kind of stretches from west. Yeah, stretch this, you idiot, you. Oh, Neil. You're listening to Neil Rogers. Well, here we go again. I'm Howard David's a bitch. There's a bunk they're old. They're the California prunes. So then you're getting old and clay. And you're constipated every day. Give us some relief. And that's for sure. And so for you, we got the cure. Just eat some of us. Eat us every day. And then flush your crabs away. Don't you know that they're wrinkled and they're tasty? Man, I'm used to it so pasty. x wax is nice, but it don't work fast. Just eat some wounds, they're a real blast. On the body, yeah. California prunes. What a way to go. 1032 at 560 WQAM. I think I'm making a little bit of a comeback. Maybe not. I think tomorrow it's going to be Flea and um, the Bird. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, and not being on yesterday, I didn't get a chance to bellyache again about the uh, starter at Gulfstream on Friday. I mean, you know, after the race is over, a lot of times we have excuses. and Oh, gee, if only this and if that. The, the starter, uh, screw that race up, the second race. The seven horse, which I picked, just barely gotten into the gate. He had no chance to, you know, to settle, and and, and all of a sudden, beep, there they're off, and he came out of there sideways, took a right turn, cost him at least five ten lengths. What a jogged! And wouldn't you know that right after the show, Phil Ark, that jackass, that ass clown, sends me an email. Oh, see, I told you the six, Neil. I told you. Yeah, blow it out your ass, you idiot. Everybody's an expert when the race is over. Brandon says, I'll tell you one thing about the crap problem in the hallway. Let somebody call the health department. It'll be an early day for all. <laughs> what do you think? I'm down with that. Yeah. Somebody call the health department. Okay, there's crap in the hallway. Is it still there? Did you look? I haven't gone out yet, but I, oh I've heard it's God. still there. That's what it's Zach still said. still there? Yeah, Zach said it's still there. Oh, no. Wow. WQAM, our middle name is... Crap. Wow. They might try to put it on the air later. Yeah, maybe we can give uh, the crap in the hallway its own show. <laughs> oh, believe me, we got plenty of crap on the air. 
Brandon says, nowadays it's very difficult to try to do a slip and fall like your friends did. They weren't my friends. They were my friends' friends. Especially when every aisle in the store now has security cameras. Well, what a shame that is. You know, with times as tough as they are right now, and thinking maybe that's a way for some enterprising people to start making a living. Go into their nearby whatever kind of store and uh, do a slip and fall. Oi, I just broke my back. Oi, I can't walk. And then, of course, you know, hunch around like you can't walk at all. And then find some quack doctor to certify that you broke your uh, thing. Threaten to sue them for about $5 million. They'll give you a couple hundred grand right there, I'll tell you. No time at all. Within a week, you'll have a big check. Kevin says, I don't understand why people complain about the guys yesterday. They were okay, pretty good for a couple of guys that hardly get airtime. If you don't like them, go masturbate, read a book, take a walk, get a life bunch of wet turds, says Kevin. You bunch of wet turds. Now, those are the ones in the hallway, Kevin. <laughs> How could nobody have cleaned that mess up? Well, it is here. Yeah. So. And you're trying to say there's nobody in charge? I guess would that fall under engineering's job? Engineering's job? <laughs> to deal with turds in the hallway? I don't think so. Oh, dealing with turds in the hallway. That'd be Clarence's job then. Yeah. Yeah, he knows his turds, believe me. Every, every day when he shaves, he looks in the mirror. There's a turd. What was he hocking me yesterday about the PPM? Do I want any information about it? No, I really don't. If I need any information, I'll ask you. Now, how does it work? <laughs> they basically walk around with like a little pager on, and it picks up the uh, broadcast. All the stations are encoded now, so it knows what it's listening to. It, it knows? Yep. It knows what it's listening to. Yep. And of course, then it downloads on a, uh, there's like a little hub for it when you get home and you put it in and it downloads all the information and I sends it right to it, does. it puts the lotion in the basket. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure of that. <laughs> it does what? Well, like, you put it on a hub when you get done at the end of the day and then it downloads all the information from the little pager-like thing and it sends it to Arbitron. Every day. Really? So it's so actually how do we, how real do we listening. Wire, how do we wire the PPMs like we used to get the diaries wired? How do we do this? Well, you hope you get someone in the panel because someone can actually stay an Arbitron panel member for up to two years with this new system. Really? Yeah, it's crazy. Well, isn't that a bitch? Probably somebody that works for a cheap channel. They've only got like 85,000 uh, employees in the market. Well, and Arbitron's dealing with lawsuits over this thing, too. They've had millions of dollars in lawsuits over this uh, meter. Really? Yep. Yeah, I have a thing here on my, um, where the hell is it? From Barry Jackass. Yeah, Tanner concerned about PPM data. Programmer still voicing concerns about PPM. On the heels of the most well-attended Arbitron consultant fly-in in its history, and extensive facts and presentations from Arbitron designed to add to radio's knowledge base of the new ratings gathering of technology, there are a number of programmers who still have some unanswered questions and who have a desire to share their questions at large. In an effort to help radio have a clear understanding of the PPM and its formulas. It's, it's a bunch of crap. Yeah, the ethnic stations don't like it for sure. They've been taking the biggest hit. Because you don't vote for your favorite station anymore. It's what you're actually oh, listening see. to. So in other words, it's not a popularity contest based on what language you speak or what right. color your skin is? Yep. I see. The only problem I have with it is the sample size is really small. Really? Like in this I market. there's like 2,000. Right, 2,000 in a market of what, three and a half million people? Yeah. That's less than a half, like around a half percent. Yeah. Yeah. The show was not bad at all, says somebody. You have a good group to fill in for you, Neil Goddard says. How do you like that? Well, here they are. Here's uh, Flea and whoever else is around. <laughs> Whoever's in the hallway. Zach and Beast and Cordis and this one. Random turd. Yeah, man. Yeah, let's get a turd in there. Man turd. They tried man cow on Steve Lapis station. How did that work out? Yeah. Isn't it amazing how everything they put on the air just flops? James Crystal Radio, a whole bunch of stations that nobody listens to and nobody even know exists. Bob Rubin. If they put Bob Rubin on the air, I'm, I'm just going to, like, plots. Which of these talentless, overrated actors makes you most ill just to look at is our poll question. we got 317 votes. That's not too bad. Put that in your pipe, Sedano, and smoke it. So he wanted more money to do mornings, that jackass? That's what I'm hearing. And so they don't have a morning show. I think it's beautiful. I mean, what, what was the emergency to blow out? Well, I know what it was because we know why Rosenberg got canned, which we're not putting on here. Did you guys talk about that yesterday? No. Good. 
I saw uh, Sid at the game yesterday. No. Yeah. Sid the kid, what did he say? I didn't talk to him. We don't know oh. each other. You what? We don't know each other, so we didn't talk. He was talking to someone I knew, though. Who was that? Uh, one of our promotion guys actually was talking with him, and a guy from uh, from Big 106 was out there as well. There was a lo every radio station in the world was out at opening day yesterday. Mm hmm. Still didn't sell it out. No. This is the this is the team that you're going to get a new stadium for. The taxpayers in Dade County are going to spend an arm and four legs and are going to be spending for years and years and years to build a new stadium that nobody cares about in a place where nobody wants to go. In Little Havana, man. Jeff says, I could have done without the killing the animals with a baseball bat hour, but I did enjoy the booger talk, says Jeff. You had any, did booger talk? Yeah, we did a little booger talk. Maybe that's why we got turds in the hallway today, because you guys have been talking about excretory crap. Yeah. And you talked about killing animals with a baseball bat? It was a story about my uh, first pet that died. Yeah, my brother hit it over the head with a bat to put it out of its misery. What kind of a, a dog? No, it was a cat. Oh, good. Oh. Yeah. Oh. All of a sudden, I'm making a big comeback. Oh, no. I feel... Oh, God. If you see a petri dish sitting out in the lab, there's a pretty good chance there. Damn, 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 I got me a tumor, it's as big as a whale, and they say that they can fix it with some stem cells. Right now I'm lightheaded, I feel kind of funny, so hurry up! And get that funding money. Your cell cells are super little cell packs. Can make a better stem cell baby. Stem cells, baby stem cells. Stem cells, baby stem cells. Oh, stem cell is a clever little. can be an old geezer. My illness is tragic. But stem cells are magic. So everybody pass them around and around and around and around. Stem cells, baby stem cells. Stem cells, baby stem cells. 1045, you know, uh, President Obama made an unscheduled stop in Iraq. He's there right now, meeting and greeting. And I was just wondering, do you think there are any, like, Schwarzers in Iraq? I don't know. Isn't that something to think about? I find it odd that he's in Iraq. No, I'm not talking about it being odd that he's there. He's the president. But I'm just talking in general, you know. Anyway, here's Blackie. says, I have a question for Flea. On yesterday's show, you were talking about a hot girl, you know, who is 40 and not married. You kind of said her name real fast. I don't want to mention her name, but with a yes or no answer, does this girl live in Chicago and work in the dental profession? No. Oh. If so, I think I may know who you're talking about, says Blackie. I guess uh, if not, he don't. She does not live in Chicago? No, Atlanta. And she doesn't work in the dental profession? What is she, a, ho a hoe? No, she actually makes jewelry. And? That's it. Oh. Oish Moy Jew says, welcome back. What will they do when you leave and not come back? Have you considered making a clone of yourself? uh huh. -huh. I can't handle the rest of the talent there, says Oishmoy. But you know what? When I'm not here, turn it off. Instead of sending me a bunch of Kretschedikia emails. Meh, meh. I get so sick of this crap. Then he says, Adam Sandler is an idiotic stooge who makes me cringe. I agree with that. I feel sorry for my eyes when they see him. I do agree Oy. with that. Meh, meh. Bunch of crybabies. That's South Florida for you. Crybabies. Yes. Don't we have that one bit called Cry Baby? Uh, what's that called? Oh, yeah, but we, I can't play it because it's Cry Baby D Bags. I'll play a little bit of it. Cry Baby D Bags. I am Cry Baby loves the Marlins, the greatest baseball team. But the West Coast, they can't only boast of trying to steal a team. They couldn't get the Mariners or the Frisco Giants, too. So now they hate the Marlins, and we all say screw you, cause you're all crybaby. Well, that's it. As much as we can play that, we sure can't play D-bags. No. 
Whoa, crybaby D-bags. Of course, then they got the Rays over there, which used to be the Devil Rays, and they had that big year last year. Yeah. And then collapsed like a, like a folding tent. Mark in West Palm says, I think some of the unemployed ass clowns who sit around wanking to the sound of you and George's mouth sounds are pissed off at Flea. I thought they kicked ass in such short notice. I do too, Mark, and I didn't hear any of it. I'm just grateful as, uh, as can be. All these people critiquing. <laughs> that was down 119 points. It was a lot worse before. But now it's, uh, well, it's, it's hovering. Jose says, Neil, what the hell are you talking about? Everything about your station is a turd. Who is that new guy? What happened to George? George is on vacation this week. I'll be on vacation next week. All right. Oh, yeah. A much-needed vacation, by the way. Are you going anywhere? I'm going anywhere. Yeah, are you going anywhere? No. No? I don't think so. A staycation? I just need to... I, I saw a great uh, picture from the uh, Toronto game last night online. There's a girl, and she had a sign, and it said, uh, We love BJ's. Really? <laughs> the Blue Jays, <laughs> mister. You better get it. <laughs> Maybe she was thinking about Alex Rios. Maybe. Sure like Alex Rios a lot. Now, let's see. we got the big Panther game tonight, and it's not on TV. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. <gasps> Denise, I'm going to have to ask you to step away from the truck. Okay, good. Um, Leafs and the Devils tonight. Any interest in that meaningless game? No. Well, upon the conclusion of this year's Stanley Cup Finals, the NHL will be setting up shop in Las Vegas to... Now, who are they playing tonight? The Panthers and the Flyers? Is that correct? That is correct. And then the Flyers, I think, played the last two games against the Rangers, who play Montreal. Yeah. Before that. The Panthers need the Rangers to lose because if they tie in points, they lose in wins. They lose That's a tiebreaker. Right. Yeah. Well, what do you mean they need, they need them to lose? They need them to lose all three games? They're, they're tied in points right now, but right. the Rangers have the edge. Right. So they need the Rangers to at least lose one of the last three games. And Wouldn't that be Panthers... something if the Panthers beat out Rangers? Rangers, all you obnoxious New Yorkers with your Rangers that were talking a big game in the beginning of the season, and now they're real quiet, all them Ranger fans, because the Rangers are gagging and choking and puking. And that's Sean Avery. What a what a goon. What an idiot. Don Cherry deservedly ripped him an ass Saturday night, and what a, what a jerk. Just goes and takes cheap shots, hitting guys in the back of the head with a stick like Tim Thomas. Hits him in the back of the head, gets a stupid penalty with less than five minutes to go. And the Rangers wind up losing to Boston one nothing. Yeah, he's dirty. He's a dirty piece of turd. He's a jerk, quote Don Cherry about Steve Avery. Ah, oh, but the Rangers are going to get him back. Yeah, well, you know what? Nobody else wants him. He fits in perfect with a losing organization. They suck. Fat Boy says, welcome back, Neil. Hope you're feeling better. Yes, I am. I do. I think you should add Vince Diesel. Uh, Vin, Vin, Vince Diesel? <laughs> Vin. I, I know it's Vin, but he's got <laughs> Vince, he writes. Vin Diesel, Vince Diesel to your pool. Man, does he suck. And so does his Fast and Furious movie that came out on Friday. The rumor Vince is he's Diesel. gay. What? The rumor is that he is gay. So? Have you heard that? No, I have not. Nor do Me I either. care about Vin or Vince Diesel. Yeah, he's terrible. Or Diesel Dyke. I added Sylvester Stallone to the poll, though. Oh, my God. If you're going to put those kind of people on there, what about Arnold? Ooh, yeah. Yeah, Arnold. Sly Stallone, a tribute to ignorance, to stupidity. A lot of dumb people out there, though. That's why stupidity sells. A lot of people can relate to it. Look at us. Look who we work for. Oh, sorry, that's your buddy. Here's one from the fake Tom Jicka. Blockbuster may be going out of business. How about that? Movie rental company Blockbuster Inc. said yesterday that the risk that it may not be completing financial deals raises substantial doubt about its ability to continue as a going concern. Dallas-based Blockbuster, which has struggled amid the popularity of DVD by mail services like Netflix, disclosed the warning in a filing with the SEC. The company had already cautioned last month that its auditor was likely to raise doubts about its ability to stay in business. Oh, boy. A going concern qualification refers to an auditor's assessment of a company's ability to continue to operate for the foreseeable future. Kind of like me. I don't think I can operate for the foreseeable future <laughs> with this gigantic pay cut. Send a big bag of money, Joe Bell, you louse. See, there's a word that we don't hear much anymore, louse. It's kind of old-fashioned. Yeah. So I figured I'd bring it back. It's good. 
Last week, Blockbuster said its revolving and term loan agreement was amended, yada, 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 et cetera, and so on. Well, this goes on forever. But on Monday, the company said its lender's obligation to fund the $250 million credit facility is subject to meeting certain conditions, and there can be no assurances that these conditions will be met. Blockbuster said it believes that it will be in a position to close the amendment credit facility by around May 11th, though there can be no assurance regarding these matters. Shares fell three cents to 85 cent in after hours trading, having closed earlier at 88 cent. Blockbuster, another one's going to bite the dust. Yeah, well, who goes and rents mu- movies anymore? Old, old-fashioned people. Yeah, because you got the pay-per-view on the Comcast. You got Larry Netflix. says Flea sounds great. He's a lot better than George. I listened to Bubba Love Sponge this morning. He was ripping the board up, an ass, and had Hogan on again, begging for a oh. job. Oh, him and that Hulk Hogan. What garbage! It's terrible. That's like us and Ira Windbag. Obsessed. Bubba said D-bag on the air. Well, we can't say it. Isn't he on the Beasley station in Fort Myers? He is. Well, aha. Uh-huh. Why ain't Joyce up on his ass? Just do it, says Larry. That's a good point. How come on a Beasley station in Fort Myers, Bubba Love Sponge can say D-bag, but on a Beasley station in Miami, we can't say it? Hmm. Huh? Hmm. Mr. Corporate Insider Hotshot, how come? Uh, what's the answer to that question? I don't know. I've been trying to fight to get uh, your show back. I've been trying. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, And what do they say? I'm not high on a totem pole, I guess. What do they say? Nothing. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll try. We'll look into it. I think they ought to look into Joyce's Rectum. ass, because I think there's something really nasty crawling around in there. <laughs> Jeff says, I'm surprised, since you have the poll right above that noxious picture, that John Revolta isn't in the pool. He makes me want to spoon my eyes out with rusty forks any time he comes on my TV. And by the way, for having two minutes' notice, I thought Flea did just fine. He's got a better voice than Geldy and also has a better personality. How do you like that for the ultimate compliment? All right. You have a better voice than Geldy and a better personality. Wow. Next thing, they'll be saying you have a better personality than Joe Zagaki. <laughs> which any personality would be better than poor Joe's. He has such old penis face. Blackie says, can you see the game tonight on the flyer feed? Oh, I'll see it. If you have the NHL package, it'll probably be on. Well, let me uh, check on my uh, NHL uh, extra ice uh, package thing. Oh, the, the thing isn't on there. Western semifinal, Windsor at Plymouth and Belleville at Niagara. Brampton at Mississauga, London and Saginaw. All these uh, OHL games. But I'm sure it'll be on my thing. Whatever happened to Wendell Clark? Finally, he retired. That's what happened to Wendell Clark. This organization here, they keep bringing back the same old retreads. Dougie Gilmore, Wendell Clark. When's Johnny Bauer going to come back and play goal? He was my favorite. He's only about 90 years old. Whatever happened to Wendell Clark? That's it. Let's get hockey intensive now. we got that big game. It's not even on TV. Mel Gibson. Oh, that's a good one for the poll. Are you going to put it on there? Oh, yeah, I'll put that on. Do you want me to put uh, Travolta on, too, or no? If you want. Okay. John Revolta. Because uh, somebody says, I can't vote on the poll till this Jew-hating feminine hygiene bag is on there. Mel Gibson. Yeah, I won't watch any movie he's in. 351 votes on there. Will Ferrell is winning hands down your pants. 65 votes. Adam Sandler, 48. People, you see him on TV, and right away you get, like, physically ill. Like when you walk in the hallway at QAM. What just happened there? Oh, I see. Somehow, oh, I had to close the pot because I couldn't play that D-bag thing. See how that affects the whole rest of the show? Joyce. Oh, Neil. This is the Neil Rogers Show. Joyce, Joyce, Joyce. This is your brain. Rock, rock, rock solid. Any questions? There's a lady in town. She's an Orthodox Jew, and she needs to buy bread that is unleavened. Oi! And she's buying bread at seven, eleven. Absolutely. By the way, speaking of this crap, better start flossing right away. I forget where the hell I saw it or heard it over the weekend, but the big thing about, which I've heard it before too, about mouth, health, and your heart. Hmm. And why you should floss and like uh, mouthwash and do all this stuff. Keep the, kill the germs in your mouth because that has a lot to do with the health of your heart and having a heart attack. Do you know that? My dentist told me that once. Well, it's true. 
Hey, and Joe Bell's got some uh, Clorox bleach and some Lysol to clean up the uh, mud that's, that's blown on idea. the back of his toilet. Mm -hmm. Oh, speaking <laughs> of that, Brandon says, I don't know how that building is there, but if they haven't cleaned up that mess yet, you're going to have all that crap you under the walls, the carpet. If there's linoleum, it could warp, and then that smell will haunt the building until it's remodeled. Well, guess what, Brandon? I guess you're not paying attention because these people don't care about that. They're leaving the building in a month or two. Yeah, that's true. But it's Joe Bell just cleaned street. it up. So what, what do they care if there's crap in the hallway, huh? It'll probably still be there the day that uh, you move out. Now, did you take a look? Did you go down there? Do you have the balls to, to look? I will on uh, the next break. I'll check it out. If that mess isn't cleaned up yet, I mean, what? Uh, somebody call the health department, okay? There's, there's turds in the hall. <laughs> More than usual. I'm not just talking about the walking ones. Oh, okay. I'm talking about the ones on the flow. Oh, Melissa in uh, Concord, North Carolina, who says, holla back at your girl. That's a, that's a Schwarzer thing, okay, Melissa, that holla back. White people don't holla back, do they? Or am I wrong about that? I don't think I've ever hollered back, no. No. Even young white guys, I don't think holla back. In fact, when I holla at young white guys, they didn't really run. It says, Flea was good on yesterday. On yesterday, see, it's a dark thing. No complaints. Please add Steven Siegel and John claude Van Damme. They suck and they're played out. Ooh. You want to put them on there? Yeah, but when was the last time they did a movie? Yeah, when was the last time we see either one of them? Don't, don't, like I said, forget about it. Sorry. Sorry, Melissa, but we're hollering back. I Holler did add back. Russell Crowe. Oh, Russell Crowe, absolutely freaking lootly, right. Although that one movie was good. The one where he played the retarded guy or whatever it was all. What was that movie? Oh. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Up, up your uh, pants. Up your up up something. Up a lazy river. Down the old mill stream. Who did that song? Cy Zentner. God, what a memory for garbage. I can remember stuff from a hundred years ago, from before most of you people were born. Cy Zentner on Dot Records, same label that Pat Boone was on, and Billy Vaughn. You remember that song, Up a Lazy River? Oh yeah. No, you don't. I do. Do you? Yeah. In, in I used to work at an oldie station. Playing. Oh, I see. You remember uh, Dot Records, Billy Vaughn, Sail Along, Silvery Moon? You remember that? No. no. Billy Vaughn and his orchestra, they did all the instrumentals on Dot. Nelson Riddle did all the instrumentals on Capitol. Remember those days? Mitch Miller did all the instrumentals on Columbia. Remember Mitch Miller? Oh, yeah. Scott says, shame old Baldy ain't going bankrupt. Wife used to work at Blockbusters in 89. She hated it. Says, call Joyce on the ear and ask her why Bubba can say it. Says Scott in Pinellas Park. You call her, Scott. Call her on the ear. Call her what? A nasty bitch? Call her on the ear. How do you more instructions from the audience? Do this, do that. Ba -beep, ba -boop, ba -bop. You call her up, Scott. You're right over there in her neck of the woods on the West Coast. The Dow's down 122. It's been down, down to all morning. 78.53 and 4 cents. Oh, but the S and P is going up, Neil. You'll see. Yeah. Wait till I get the uh, the next next piece of turd from Maria Bartiromo. Speaking of turd, the fake Kenny Rogers. By the way, is the uh, Kenny Rogers from um, across the street? Is he on on the weekends or not? I have not seen him on the schedule the last couple of weeks. No. Oh, well, he must suck then. Adam Cooperstein's on this weekend. Yeah, he's on every weekend. It seems like. And the weekly fisherman is on six to nine. Three hours of fishing on Saturday morning. My God. Three hours of fishing talk. Oh, that's Mandish's thing. Like I said, great radio. Kenny Rogers says, Baruch, what is that? Baruch Shava. He's trying to do Hebrew, I guess. Flea was great yesterday. He's got a real uh, cool dude voice. And the mix of the other of the other guests were even good. Even gay, gay J. <laughs> Honestly, I think WQM should be proud. They can throw a good... Mix of talent to take over for you at any time. George has got his own intellectual sh snazzy thing about him. Flea's got the down-to-earth uh, guy thing going. I'm proud to be one of your 14 listeners, says uh, this idiot. All right. The Marlins game was pretty packed considering it was 91 degrees. Not a sellout, but a good, but a ton of good fans out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was hot. A ask Flea, it says. Go Marlins, come out there. Oh, it was hot, and that's an excuse for not selling out opening day? No. It's opening day. you got to go. 
Give me a break. Opening day, that's the big sim. It's even people who wouldn't go if you paid them $100 go on opening day. And they, a ton of excuses. Oh, it was 91 degrees in the shade. It was so hot. Too bad. Support your Marlins, man, or not, as the case may be. I don't give a crap about the Marlins or about who stole the most bases or any of that other crap. Although I, I would rather hear about the Marlins than hear about all that basketball crap that Ira Windbag was talking about on Joe's show this morning. Oh, my God. And what's that guy's name again? That Udonis Haslam. Udonis. There really is a guy named Udonis? Yeah. I know there was a guy named Udonis, but Udonis? What about Odonis and Idonis and Edonis? And this afternoon I'm going to Dedonis. Get my teeth cleaned. No woodbine today? Maybe later. Okay. Now, I may have to give that up. I had a brutal weekend there. Oh, my God. I'm starting to get like Frog Maurice with those $5 Wheel of Fortune. Oh, did I lose my ass this weekend. They got new $5. They got like two times, three times, four times, five times. And, of course, five times nothing is still nothing, you know. But they're very addictive. And don't don't start playing $5 Wheel of Fortune. That's my best advice to all you would-be schlock players, okay? Quick hit. That's where I win and win and win. And I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm scared to give it all back. I'm quick hit. And it sounds to me like somebody took a quick Schmidt in the hallway there. Don't forget, during this break, you're going down and doing a little inspection. Isn't there anybody in the building who's, like, giving you, like, advice on what's going on there? No, not really. A spy report? No. I guess I should have quit after, isn't there anybody in the building? Right. Question mark? Well, what's the story? What is this Friday is Good Friday? That's what I hear. And Sunday, oh, that's right. We actually get the day off, I think. You get the day off on Friday? Well, I'm not going to take it. I don't get the day it. off on Goyesha holiday, huh? Yeah, I'm not taking it off either, but I think uh, in the office you can choose Friday or Monday as a day off. What's Monday? Easter Monday? <laughs> I no, guess. no, no. Now, you're, you're laughing. You see, you didn't know there's such a thing. There's Easter Sunday, and there also is an Easter Monday, which I never knew of until I think last year. I just, I just found out about it now, then. Well, there you go. Easter Monday, my ass. Let's go roll some Easter eggs on the lawn, and let's uh, get the Easter bunny hopping along. And, of course, this is a big time when they, uh, when they sell you all that crap, all the candy. Ugh. Easter candy. And, of course, Pesadicky candy, too, which I'm still asking the question. Nobody's answered. What makes candy, any kind of candy, kosher for Pesach? I don't know, but I do like the uh, marshmallow uh, peeps. Those little yeah. chickens. Yeah, those are so good. So do I. Yeah. How can you not love those? Oh, they're awesome. It's like crack. Peeps. <laughs> Marshmallow peeps. <laughs> I love almost any kind of candy, unless it's got peanut butter in it. Then I don't want no part of it. Ooh, fair. You like peanut butter and candy? Um, not normally because it's usually fake peanut butter. Oh, I'll take mushy, a Snickers. Man. That goes back to my aversion for mushy foods. Although those marshmallow things can be kind of mushy. Mushalid. Dow's down one thirty-five. Everything, everything is calm today. Back to normal. George is on vacation this week. Don't get all panicky. But where's George? What's going on there at QAM? And how come Bubba could say D-bag? That should be our biggest problem, right? If that was my biggest problem in life is that Bubba can say D-bag on here and I can't, that I would be so happy. You have no idea. I'd be ecstatic. I'd be doing a, a rhapsody in my pants right now. As opposed to the Rhapsody on the floor, which evidently somebody did before. <laughs> now, is there going to be an investigation to see who was responsible for the spillover and the uh, mess in the hallway? Well, Jesse discovered it this morning, so it had to be someone from last night. Uh-huh. And who worked last night? That I don't know. Oh. Well, let's get the investigation going. Let's get the QM and the... Because um, they always do these things. They have like a big commission that they put together and have a big inquisition. Let's have a QM inquisition about whose turds are in the hallway. In fact, you know something? It's like that tow yard turd bit that I play. Maybe what they ought to do is, like, check everybody's turds and see which ones match the ones in the hall. And do a then, lineup? <laughs> that's right. Line them up, baby. Oh, God, Neil. Hillary Clinton has arrived in Mexico City as a violent war between the drug cartels rages there. She says, I remember landing under sniper fire. There was supposed to be some kind of a greeting ceremony at the airport, but instead we just ran with our heads down to get into the vehicles. Exact quote there, much more dangerous position. It's 1116, yeah, that lion bitch. We don't hear about her no more. Oh, that's right, she's the Secretary of State. Mm-hmm. There's El Presidente getting on Air Force One. Now, I don't know, was that in Iraq they just showed? Who knows? They just show all this file footage. It might have been like a month ago. Who, who knows? 
You're a bunch of grave robbers at CNN, okay? You should all be uh, in prison. And the people at CNBC, they all should be on death row. Oh, it's a buying opportunity. It's the new economy. It's ba 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 beep, 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 beep. Yeah, right. Uh, Peddling crap. The hallway, on the hallway is clean. The hallway is clean. And bathroom, right. yep. Joe Bell cleaned it himself, apparently. The general mangler cleaned turds off the floor? <laughs> yep. Holy moly. We got, I mean, I know we had a lot of cutbacks there, but have we got that bad of a shortage that GM's got to be the, the potty uh, cleaner now? I guess so. Can you see that? <laughs> he do no. it with his, with his hands or with his tongue? I didn't ask. Oh, good God. Joe Bell cleaned the feces off the floor? He did. Come on. I'm telling you. He came in, showed me. <laughs> he showed you a handful? Yeah. Oh, my God. Woo! What a thought. Well, you know something? If anybody can relate to it, he's the guy. <laughs> That's his motto. That's Jolly Joe Bell's motto is, Crap. is us. George Ann says, when I, when I tuned in, I was like, what? But to tell you the truth, it was pretty amazing how Lee and the guys did a four-hour show without one phone call. Obviously, they're not you, but not too bad for a no-show prep. Yeah, I gave you, like, what, about 40 minutes notice? Yeah. And by the way, I could already see the WQM staff scooting over to KFC to take a Schmidt. Always listening. Yeah, that's <laughs> an idea for you. they got a public tea room there at KFC. Mm -hmm. But Jolly Joe did yeoman work this morning, cleaned up the turlets, cleaned up the hallway. I mean, is that a sad commentary that there's nobody else in that building who would have, like, rolled up their sleeves and doo-doo-doo for a doo-doo? Oh, come on. I wish I'd have known so I could have taken a picture of it. Oh, would, would that be great? We could put it on our website. <laughs> Jolly Joe with his hands full of Schmidt. Mm-mm. Russell Crowe, a beautiful mind. I told you it began with the word up. A beautiful mind. 2001. movie. Huh? It, it was in 2001. What about it? That movie. And? That's it. Oh. That was a good movie, though. Yeah, it was a good movie. And, it come, and in the end, to come to find out, the whole thing was... Uh, it, it was kind of like uh, that Ed Norton movie. What was the one where it turned out he actually murdered the guy? Oh, the one with um, Richard Gere. Yeah. Oh. Ed Norton. Google Ed Norton and you'll find the name of the movie. I'm on it. I, I hate to ruin the end of that movie because it's really a good movie. And you think that, oh, you feel sorry for him and everything else. And then in the end, come to find out he was actually the killer. Ed Norton, he's great. And American History X was on again. Yeah, that was awesome. Last weekend. Primal Fear. Primal Fear, that's the one. Which of these talentless, overrated actors makes you most ill to look at? That's our pool question. We got 393 votes. Will Ferrell seems to be winning the contest, 72. I don't, I don't see Will Ferrell uh, much in anything, thank God. But well, what is he in and on? That people are seeing him so much. Mm -hmm. Will Ferrell, 72. Adam Sandler, 56. Martin Lawrence, 47. Jim Carrey, 40. Ben Stiller, 35. He makes me nauseous. Will Smith, 32. He makes me gag. Kevin Costner, 26. Keanu Reeves, 24. George Clooney, 14. Eddie Murphy, 13. Sly Stallone, 10. Robert Downey Jr., 10. John Revolta, 5. Tom Hanks, 4. Mel Gibson, 3. Russell Crowe, Solamente Uno. I think we left somebody off of there. Oh, didn't we want to put John? Oh, he's got five, John Revolta. That's probably because of that picture. They're all, they all want to say, hey, Johnny. You fair Like that. But they don't dare. Oh, here we go. Brian says, I'm so glad there is Schmidt in the hall. Well, guess what, Brian? It's gone, Marge. Oh, it says, signed, Marge shot. <laughs> <laughs> Marge Schmidt. Wow, haven't heard that She's name in a while. Dead, by the way, huh? I said I haven't heard that name in a while. Yeah, wasn't she a real princess, real nice bitch? I, I, I bet she and Joyce were the same person. I wish, because then Joyce would be dead. Oh, not that we wish you a death, uh, Joyce, but we do. So Mark in Coconut Creek says kosher candy and wine is handled by pure Jewish hands. Well, I could tell mm. you some things that have been handled by these pure Jewish hands, but then again, you know, we can't say it on the air. <laughs> Kosher candy and wine is handled by pure Jewish hands. Have you ever heard such a bubble mice in your life? No. Well, as, as opposed to what, an impure Jewish hand? What makes Jewish hands pure, Mark? What kind of fairy tales? What kind of nourish kite? 
Blackie says, Neil, I know you uh, you know this reporter, and I think you may enjoy this article. I don't know who it is. Mike Sheehan, cop-turned-TV newsman on the wrong side of the law, arrested for driving into an NYPD horse. I, I have no idea who this is. It's got a photo of him. i never seen him. i never heard the name. But Blackie says, oh, you know him. The car that cop-turned-TV newsman Mike Sheehan was driving last night when he collided with an NYPD horse in Tribeca, he refused to take a breathalyzer test. He faces up to a year in jail if convicted. Sheehan, a former cop who normally breaks stories, broke the law and became the news police, said he was arrested last night for refusing to take a breathalyzer test after driving into an NYPD horse. The Fox 5 News reporter was arraigned Tuesday and charged with reckless endangerment and operating a vehicle while intoxicated and impaired. What's the matter? I didn't hit nothing, prosecutors quoted Sheehan as telling cops. Through his lawyer, Sheehan 60 denied the allegations. He claims the horse ran into him. It's Mr. Sheehan's position that the horse ran into his car. Lawyer Thomas Monahan said he did nothing wrong. Mr. Sheehan's going to be vindicated. He faces up to a year in jail if convicted. The Manhattan DA's office did not request bail. The horse suffered cuts, bruises, and scrapes to the hind, thigh, and knee. A Fox 5 spokeswoman said management's aware of the matter and reviewing it. Cops arrested Sheehan at 10.30 p.m. after speeding and crashing his 2008 Mercury into a mounted unit horse on North Moore Street. The crash Sheehan's, I guess, broke Sheehan's driver's side window, left one of the officers injured, cut the horse, and sent scampering uh, two blocks. The word's missing. This is a bad article from Fox News, no less. Well, figures. The complaint also says Sheehan's speech was slurred and his breath smelled of booze, Monaghan insisted the police report indicates responding officers show no, no signs of drinking and driving on Sheehan. That's why it's strange, he said after the arraignment. His next court uh, date is May 19. Sheehan, a cop for 25 years, worked on several famous cases, including the Central Park Jogger case, the Robert Chambers preppy murder case, and the Zodiac Killer. As a reporter, he's been nominated for six Emmy Awards, including his work on 9-11. And now, he's got Soros. Mike Sheehan, do you ever hear of him? No. I see the picture here, and it's a black. He says, you know him, and uh, yeah, I don't know him. Here's quite a story that Brandon sent in. Man strips in protest of bread sale during Passover. It's even got a picture here. Oy vey, he looks so Jewish. He's got all the, the facial hair in the whole deal. He's got something written in Hebrew on his chest. Oy. R the writing on the stomach, on the pupic. Well, well, we'll save that for after the break. It's heavy, heavy breaking news. Breaking news, baby. Everything is breaking news. Have you noticed that? Mm-hmm. Even on the Cartoon Channel. Breaking news. 399 votes. Which of these talentless, overrated actors makes you most ill to look at? And Will Ferrell continues uh, taking down the top prize, 74. Adam Sandler, 56. Martin Lawrence, 47. Jim Carrey, 40. I'll only do the double-digit ones, which is most everybody. Ben Stiller, 36. Will Smith, 32. Kevin Costner, 27. Keanu Reeves, 24. George Clooney, 14. Eddie Murphy, 13. Slides the loan, 11. And Robert Downey Jr., he's got 10. Oh, Neil! Oh, my God! If you play Hank Goldberg again, I'm gonna f***ing throw up! I think we had a Godfather free weekend on AMC. Let's hear it. Rectum. All right. Pretty unusual, ain't it? Now, before I get into this guy with the um, man strips and protest of bread sale, <laughs> ask Lee, this is from the fake Adam Kirshner. Okay. Ask Lee what he thinks of the great Billy West. The great Billy West? Who's Billy West? I don't know. Oh, I guess that's the answer to your question, Adam. You don't know from Billy West, neither do I. I know Adam West. Yeah, Batman. Adam also says the fake Adam. Uh, Flea is a breath of fresh air. George is a friend, but Lee is much better on ear. They should really give George and Flea the two to four spot. Did you ever hear back from Rick Shaw? No. No. I, I get nothing on the MySpace. There, there's nothing on there. Nothing. Zippity doo dah. That thing is dead as a doornail. And oh, and that reminds me, I was going to ask you, give you a bunch of business, give you the business about all that twittering you're doing. Uh -huh. Are you still doing that? Eh, not so much. Why? Why did you get involved in that? 
because it seemed to be the thing to do, but who wants to follow me? It doesn't matter. So I kind of give it. I've it given up on it. Seems to be the thing to do. Yeah, I figured I'd give it a try. See what I could follow. See who could follow me. But it's uh, it's pointless. And what did you get from it? Nothing. A headache. Yeah. Twitter. Everybody's into the. Oh, here's the latest fad. It's Facebook. No, it's Twitter. No, it's back to MySpace. No, it's uh, whatever. All these lifeless people with uh, no, no nothing going on. 411 votes on the poll. I remember the days when we used to like go for a thousand on the poll. Back when we had an audience. Yeah. Back before Joe Bell came to town. Well, one good thing about Joe, he's a real uh, floor cleaner. He's a real uh, picker-upper. He's like Rosie, the quicker picker-upper. Only I bet you Rosie never picked up turds, especially with her bare hands. No. And he Billy West, Billy West does voices. He's a voice guy. He does Futurama and stuff like that. And uh, there you go. I don't care. You know I who guess he is? he's fine. No, now I do. Yeah, see, we don't know who the hell that is. Adam, fake Adam. Man strips in protest of bread sale during Pesach. A young man dressed as a yeshiva student undresses at a non-kosher supermarket chain, remaining only with socks. I, I can't read the word. Covering his private parts. <laughs> the shame is not mine, he tells Ynet. The article written by Avi Cohen. A 27-year-old man claiming to be a yeshiva student decided to launch an unusual protest against the court ruling, allowing stores and restaurants to sell leavened food during the holiday of Passover. The man dressed as a Haredi. What is that? No, I don't know. Arrived Monday afternoon at a store belonging to the non-kosher Tiv Tom supermarket chain in the city of something, just south of Tel Aviv. Oh, this is in Israel, no less. Upon his arrival, he undressed and remained with only a sock covering his private parts. <laughs> a sock covering his thing. Oh, look at this. They took a poll. 81% won't buy bread on Passover. Oh. Uh -huh. Now, where they took the poll, I don't know. Aventura? Now, this is the, the same article here. The man explained he could not be prosecuted for an indecent act in public because, he, according to the court's interpretation of the Levin Food Law, a supermarket is not considered a public place. He even wrote on my stomach, this isn't public question mark, which he wrote in Hebrew. A real farbison. The store employees alerted the police who dressed the man, arrested him, and took him to the police station. In his investigation, the suspect claimed he was a yeshiva student studying in a different yeshivot in Bat Yam. In a yeshivot. Oy vey. He told police that in light of the court ruling, he didn't violate any law. The police were unconvinced by the young man's interpretation of the ruling and are expected to ask the Rishon Lazayan Magistrate's Court to send him to a m mental observation place, to a nut house. I don't know if they plan to prosecute me, but I plan to demand that they open an unjustified criminal record. I plan to fight for my innocence, the young man. Arya Yerushalami told Wynette Monday night. Yerushalami. He explained his decision to strip despite his religious values, saying, this is why I left the sock on, that's why I didn't care. Somebody, sometimes you have to shout, the shame was not mine, but the other people's. The shame, selling leavened bread during Pesach. How dare they? He said that he entered the Tiv Tom Stir and Bat Yam's industrial zone at 2.20 p.m. He noticed a group of miners and waited for them to leave. After they left, he said he called police and reported there was a nude person in the store. He then walked over to the bread counter, took all his clothes off, apart from a sock covering his private parts. How can you have a sock on your private parts? you understand that? I've seen it before. It was a cover of a Rolling Stone magazine with the Red Hot Chili Peppers once. Really? Yeah. Following his arrest and investigation, Yerushalami was put under house arrest. He claimed he was released because the establishment was not interested in a media party at the courtroom. Yerushalami told Wynette that after he undressed, there were several girls who laughed while the store manager and guard demanded that he uh, leave the premises. When the police arrived, he got dressed and went out. I wanted to do it a week ago, but I was lazy for different reasons. Now, during the mid-holidays, I'm free, he said. Several weeks ago, a Jerusalem Municipal Court judge decreed that the indictments against four restaurant owners charged with selling leavened goods during Passover be scrapped. And it goes on. It's just, it's just ponderous. It's pathetic. It's more of this uh, religious bubba mice. It's crap. Garbage. Oi, the bread is leaven. The ba 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 ba. Be 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 be. Oi vey. And then the thing from uh, about about it. kosher hands. What was it? They have to be Jewish hands to handle the wine and the candy. Right. Like pasadiki candy. My ass. Pure kosher hands. 
Pure kosher right. hands, that's right, as opposed to impure kosher hands. <laughs> Such nonsense, man. <laughs> uh, well, now, what's the most ridiculous holiday? Which is more ridiculous, Easter or Passover? They're about the same, I guess. They're all, they're all ridiculous. It's all garbage, man, all nonsense. Oh, yep. how can you say those things? Real easy, I move my lips, I make sounds with my mouth. Here's one from Dick Cheney. It said, add Ashton Kutcher and Ben Affleck to your poll. They are the worst. Rub my balls, signed Dick Cheney. Wow. No, I will not rub your balls, Dick Cheney. Oh, my God. How come he's not on death row yet, him and the bush? The Dow's down 136. It's been uh, not good since it opened today. Probably because I'm back. <laughs> yeah, I think that's got something to do with it. Got turds on the floor. All kinds of horrible things happen today. Yesterday, when Flea was there with the Zach and the, what's his name, Spendrick, everything was great. Other than Ferris Bueller's Day Off, what good movie has Matthew Broderick made? Add him up there. He is horrible, annoys me like Nancy Grace does, says Fat Boy. Matthew Broderick is annoying? Hmm. I don't see that. Wasn't he in um, Torch Song Trilogy? Yes. With what's her name? What's her name, the Screaming Queen? Um, the Torch guy, Song Trilogy. The guy from the producers? Look up Torch Song Trilogy. Gary says, last weekend I helped a friend clean out his garage, found an old Sony boombox. It had a cassette inside with a bunch of bits from your show back in the good old days. It was great hearing stuff like bagpipes and peeping through the keyhole, plus lots of fart sounds. Best was you letting out a long GD. Now, that's great radio. Listening every day, no matter who's behind the mic, says Gary from said, Well, thanks, Gary, for putting up with our watered-down show. Thank you. What the hell is her name? Famous Screaming Queen. Torch Song Trilogy. Did you look it up? I'm looking right now. Oh, my God. Fred in Boca says, I saw in the news about the season opener. Still, I'm not going to any games, new stadium or not. I may watch on TV. They may make the World Series, and it's free. Oh, they, oh I see if they make the World Series. Well, they won't. Who was it? Matthew Broderick. Right. And. I can't find it. Anne Bancroft was in it. She played the screamer's mother. When we go, we're from New York. When we get old, we go to Florida to die. That oh, was one of the great lines of that movie. I think I found it. Yes? Um, Harvey Firestein. Harvey Firestein. How could I forget? And, and, and even you didn't know Harvey Firestein? No, I was thinking of Nathan Lane, actually. Were you? Well, he's a queen too, right? Yeah. Let me see if I got that Harvey Firestein bit. Oh yeah, I heard it. Hi, this is Harvey Firestein. Maybe you heard about the gay softball tournament about to take place down in Nashville. Well, I happen to be the manager of the softball team at the Putnam Way Inn. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a little sample of that. I don't think we can play the whole thing, but what do I know? George Bush doesn't care about black people. Absolutely. All right. Banana picking Julio's who thrive on anarchy are building an arena for the Miami Heat. Having two arenas somehow don't seem right. Better ask Jeff Cohen for financial advice. Yeah. NBA is locked down. There's no basketball. They're all on strike. Let's burn the place down. An insurance check would sure be nice. Before we lose our ass, take that can of Sixty-five points. Nish good, man. Nish good. I got an email from Dan Coons. Now, that name would mean nothing to you or nope. probably anybody else. Mm -mm. 
Nazi, it says subject, Nazi Boy Scout, WNWS. He was one of the sales holes at WS News 100 years ago. Oh. Big, tall, blonde guy, goofball. Dumb. But then again, he was a sales hole. He says, hi, Neil, if you made it past the subject line, congrats. I'll be in South Florida the week of May 11 to 15. I'd like to come by and say hello, Dan. Did I tell you, dumb? Mm. He'll be in South Florida. He wants to come by and say hello. I'm not in oh. South Florida, Dan, nor will I be there May 11 to 15 or any <laughs> other date. <laughs> Sacramento, California. He works for a cheap channel. Ooh. Clear Channel Radio Sacramento. KFBK, KSTE, KHYL, KGBY, KQJK. Clear Channel, a senior account executive. He's still a sales hole after all these years. After like a hundred years, he's selling for a cheap channel. And don't wow. forget. Sales people are ice holes. Right. Ass clowns. So, uh, nice hearing from you, I guess, Danny Boy, but I won't be there. So go by and say hi. There won't <laughs> be anybody there that you know. Or better yet, go by um, Cheap Channel. Go, go see Ken Charles. A real effing genius. So, uh, you know, we're not getting any emails about the great new lineup at WYNZ. You you sent me that thing, and I have it already had it in my pile, but I'll never find it. That statement that they put out, that hearts and flowers thing about, oh, we couldn't oh, make yeah. any money. Oh, gee. Oh, what was us? <laughs> Betty Romer said, well, it's official. This is an old one from Monday. As of this morning, WINZ is Fox Sports Network, all sports talk radio. Bad enough, but to start today with Jim Rome, or however the hell he spells it, and the Fox Sports slogan, and we have more balls, and then she says, Oi, 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 oi. Several oi's. Oh, here it is. Here it is. From the fake Tom Jicka and from Flea. WINZ has changed the sports animal. Bah! So tell me about the cat before I read this. About the what? The cat that your brother hit with a baseball bat. Oh, yeah, it was very traumatic. I was giving people a little insight into my, uh, you know, white trash life. Yeah. And basically the cat ate a, uh, a black lizard, which get it, I guess made it sick and was mm -hmm. was dying. So my brother decided to put it out of its misery with a bat and, like, clubbed it over the head in front of me, and I was traumatized for a while. That's about it. Kitty, 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 kitty. And then, Why did oh. you have a cat? For the same reason you were on Twitter? Well, the cat was there before me, so. What do you mean by that? Like, it was there when I was born. The cat was... Already oh. there, yeah. So it wasn't your kitty cat? No, I'm not a cat person. Oh, if you if you said you were, I I I you'd be doing another two hours and twelve minutes, <laughs> all alone. I'd have just got up and run out of here. So here's the uh, message that W Y N. You notice W Y G W N Z management. The word management is scrawled out like a child wrote it. Did you see that? Yeah. Management written out like. I mean, the rest of it is all typed out, but WYNZ management, like they signed it like a child. Sadly, progressive radio on WYNZ is over. WYNZ has not made money as long as it's been progressive. The reasons are simple. The audience for the format is very loyal, but also very small compared to WIOD, WQAM, Waxy, and the FMs. When a client comes on the radio station, they do get almost immediate results. However, the audience is quickly saturated. Within 30 days or so, the results slow and then quickly stop. At that point, the clients pull off and go to another station, or in some cases, another medium. With the election and everything, it helped prolong the format and keep it going, hoping things might change. They did not. So the economy, Randy Rhodes, a huge part of WYNZ, losing her syndication, and the size of the listening audience forced the company to make this decision. Trust me, it was not easy, and we did put up a good fight for the last five years. Oh, yeah. Yes, there are more sports stations in South Florida than sports teams, but with the heat and the gators already on WYNZ, the feeling was that this environment, in this environment, the format would be more successful. Only time will tell, of course. Thank you for your loyal listening and for caring enough to write. WYNZ management scrawled out like by a little child. Is that pathetic or what? Sad. Yeah, very. Wah! Wah! We weren't making any money. Wah! What a line that is. There are more sports stations in South Florida than sports teams. <laughs> but with the heat and the Gators already on, what the hell have the Gators got to do with South Florida? Don't they play in uh, Gainesville last time I checked? Yep. I mean, sure, there's some alumni, some, uh, you know, clowns out there, some Gator clowns. But, I mean, that's enough to justify a format change. In addition to which, what have the Heat or the Gators got to do with all these syndicated talk shows that they got on the air? Anything at all? No. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. That's Cheap Channel for you. 
Everything they touch, they consistently destroy. They butcher it. They're like Joe Bell. When I worked in that building, Dave Ross put out a memo. If anybody called it Cheap Channel, we were going to be fired on the spot. Really? That guy was an ass clown for sure. David Ross, who oh. you call an ass clown? He was. Can't stand that good, guy. Good buddies with Norma Kent, by the way. Really? Sorry Friends to hear that. Feather, yeah. Lose together. Him and your well, buddy I've been Peter Bolger. David Ross, and uh, David Ross says this, and, and then of course he he moved from David Ross over to um, Steve Lappa and and um, James Crystal Radio. Hmm. All the losers, all the uh, oh, swill. Rick and Boca says I'm not one to give advice, critiques, or complaints, but. And, of course, as usual, Rick B. doesn't know what he's talking about. The subject, what you should do. Based on your recent picture on your website. Now, do you remember that picture we had up there from 100 years ago when I was really, really fat? Oh, yeah. Remember that picture I put up there as a joke? Yeah. In my underwears. Well, that picture was from a long time ago, Rick, but I don't want to confuse you with the facts. Based on your recent picture on your website, I think you should think about riding a bike or walking for exercise. I do walk a lot. I walk more in one day here than I would walk in a year in South Florida. Life is too short to be in the grave before 70, says Rick and Boca, who doesn't know what the least talking about. Picture was an old picture from long ago when I was much, much. I think that in that picture I was like about 240. Now I'm 190. So you see the difference? Mm -hmm. I'm still fat. Nowhere near, though. And out of shape, but nothing like that. But then again, Rick, you know, not want to tell you what to do, but, but, do this, do that. Fred and Boca says, I saw a great Toronto Flyer shootout a few days ago on the Rogers Network. Is that your network or just coincidence? <laughs> if it's yours, good choice of games. Yeah, it's my network, the Rogers. Oh, God. Wow. Yeah, see what I'm saying? Is that my network? Yeah, it's my my stadium, too, the Rogers uh, Center. Tim and Tampa says, I like the way you and Flea interact during the show. George does well also, but he doesn't know a damn thing when it comes to sports. I think George ran off the Lucy Lopez guy. What, what does that mean? I don't know. I don't miss a lot of the callers, but then there are a few I do miss. I don't miss any of them. I, do you miss the calls? No. Here's my poll suggestion. Who is the worst caller on the Neil Rogers show? And I'll let you make the list. No thanks, Tim and Tampa. We're not going to get obsessed with the callers. There are no more callers. It's done. It's finished. It's history. Over. How about taking a couple of calls? No. Just keep sending that in. The Dow's down 163, by the way. Mm. Here's one from Dave who says, Will Smith has no acting range. You can take one character he plays in one movie... Insert the same character in another movie, you wouldn't know the difference. Don't forget, he came up with that mega hit, getting jiggy with it. <laughs> I don't want to come across as too anti-Will Smith, but if he were to die, well, Schmidt happens. I agree, Dave and Coral Springs. If he were to croak tomorrow, I wouldn't uh, shed a tear. I have to say he was okay in the uh, Muhammad Ali movie. Oh, my God. Okay, marginally. I didn't watch it. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Why would I watch a movie about Muhammad Ali? I don't know. Oh, and never watch the movie Righteous Kill, ever. What's that about? De Niro and Al Pacino. They're two yeah. cops. They're buddies. And Buddy cops? Yeah, De Niro is like a killer. and uh, I, I, almost, I almost turned it off at the opening credits. It was so bad. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. And you watched the whole thing? No, I, I about, about a quarter of the way through I turned it off. I said, I can't watch really? this. Really? Yeah, it was that bad. Well, both of them made uh, several clunkers. Yeah, horrible, including, cheesy writing. Including that horrendous, the awful, the most, oh my God. <laughs> Scent of a Woman, yeah. which I think he won an Oscar for. Or he something did. Like that. that was the worst movie maybe he ever made. I she agree. Hua, hua. He just kept saying that over and over in the movie. Yep. Dog Day Afternoon was great though. Yes. But that was a long, with, with Fredo, long with time Cazelle. ago. Yeah. They're all saying I'm gay. Will you tell them I'm not gay too? Captain Dave is the subject of Doug's email. It says, I'm a listener from the WYOD Zeta years. Any word on the life and times of Captain Dave Caprita? He's on the West Coast doing st stuff. I don't know what he's doing. West Coast, not the West Coast of Florida, the West Coast of the USA. Eh? I will say that the email part of your show most parallels the creativity the calls you received during the yesteryears of Zeta and IOD. Thank you for my new listening energy, South Miami Doug. In respect to Passover, think about playing the Henry Barrow, Joe Zagecki, Hank Goldberg is Jewish song bit. I don't know what that is. I mean, I remember it, but I don't got it. I don't got it. It was a guitar man thing, I believe. Henry Barrow is Jewish. Can you believe it? I don't have it. You got it? Now, did you play any of uh, stuff yesterday or what? Yeah, I played some of the stuff of uh, Boca Brian that I had here on CD. Agriculture department scientists say they have made a major stride toward developing an allergy-free rubber. Oh, Neil. 
this is Dick Cheney. I like to relax by having Mary Magdalene massage my balls while listening to the Neil Rogers 12 to 1 hour. <clears> hey. <throat> Just like Jim Schuyler with a $30 keyboard to you. I wouldn't need to buy a fancy dad or a computer. A microphone and tape deck will do. Even a schlepper like Boca Brian has better equipment, but even so. Oh, when I grow up, I want to be just like Jim Schuyler. Then I wouldn't have to spend my dough. Here comes my solo. I wouldn't have to spend my dough. I think that sounds just fine. Oh, we're fine. Yeah, sure. 12 o'clock at 560 WQM. Happy Tuesday to you. I'm back. Flea is here. George is on vacation this week. Now, wait wait till you hear the next idiotic email I have, okay? All right, from, from Tim Jones, who claims to be Jorge Sedano's agent. The only problem is he doesn't know how to spell Sedano. He has two <laughs> N's. Is that, is that generally a pretty good tip-off? Yeah. Subject, Jorge Sedano making his move. Neil. George Sedano, misspelled again. All, all the times it's in here is spelled with two N's. Is in contract talks with Jolly Joe Bell about making the switch over to 560 WQM from 940 WYNZ. The only problem with that also is he's not on 940 WYNZ. <laughs> <laughs> Sedano will be taking over the 4 to 7 slot, moving Jim Manage to the 2 to 4 slot. Mm. If after three months Jim Manage's numbers don't get out of the 1s, he'll be removed from WQM, signed Jorge Sedano with 2N's agent. Right. That's Jorge Sedano from 940 WYNZ? Mm hmm. You know, it's one thing to send a stupid fake email, but I mean, th this one is um, one of the all-time worst. Bad. Really, give it a big <coughs> buzz. Oh, my. Can you believe that? No. That's pathetic. Can't even spell a guy's name and he's supposed to be his agent? Right. In addition to which, if you think it's somebody's agent that they're going to be sending a, a, a thing like that? Oh, here's one from Robert about the Cheap Channel ripping them an ass. Now, did you ever work for Cheap Channel? I did. That's what I thought. For three years. On the West Coast? No, here, in Zeta. You worked on Zeta? Yeah. And what, doing what? I did middays for a while, I did afternoons for a while, and I was the uh, APD and music director. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. With Rick, Greg Steele. Rick James Bitch says, Hi, just checking in, wondering when I should come in for my job interview. Yours truly. Yuck, yuck, yuck. When the moon comes over the mountain. Yeah, beautiful mind, we know, Russell Crowe. How's that pool coming? 451 votes. Not bad. Not good. No. On a show where we used to do a 1,000 routinely, we'd push and push. And, of course, that's why we had Fat Chris on the show. Yeah. He was the pullmeister. Mm-hmm. He used to get a response to the likes of which, well, Robert said major corporations don't have to make a profit initially. Clear Channel, WYNZ, is the Taliban of progressive talk radio. There are more Democrats, liberals, registered in the tri-county area. Now our choice is limited to the Nazis like Michael Savage, Joyce Kaufman, Sean Hanky Pank, and the rest of the hate mongers. Do these people invent hate, were born with it, or is it a uh, learning process? Where would Jerry Witzner, chubby check it in, fit in this picture? Oh, he'd be right there. He'd be right in the heart of it. Why don't you change your format and go back to talk, it says, says Robert. Oh, that this is uh, about W, Y, and Z. I guess, I don't know. You think it's about WYNZ or it's about me? I'm not sure. We don't know. We Follow it up, Robert. Clarify, okay? We, we can't figure it out. Why don't you change your format and go back to talk? Yeah, INZ is going to go back. After after one and a half days of doing sports, they're going to go back to a progressive talk. Right. Give it up, Robert. Ain't going to happen. I know it's not Robert Reaper, the Grim Reaper, the Lord of the Board. Now, do you know about Kenny Walker at all? Oh, yes. And? Nice guy. Horrible fit when he was on the morning show here, but uh, an okay FM guy for a chick station. It's 82 along the coast. <laughs> Glenn says, please add Brendan Fraser and you'll have my vote. Yeah, he's pretty you bad. put Brendan Fraser on there. He's annoying. Sure, I can do that. He's real annoying. The fake Adam Kirshner says, Flea claimed to be a fan of Howard Stern and Artie Lang. Billy was the voice man in Howard about 15 years ago and was hysterically funny. Yeah, that's when Howard was funny, about 15 years ago. Right, I didn't listen then. He was the voice of Marge Schott, Larry Fine, Raymond Burr, Leona Helmsley, George Takai, Al Michaels, and many others. Funniest radio person ever. He started on WBCN in Boston. 
Well, you never heard of him then? No, I never listened he... to Howard back then. Oh, when he was funny? Yeah. How's that serious stock doing, by the way? It was like 36 cents, 34 cents. They goosed it up. Wow. Let me take a look. Serious stock. One moment, please. Okay, here we go. Sirius XM Radio. Yada yada yada. Da 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 da. da. Uh, thirty-four cent. It opened today at thirty-six, and now it's thirty-four. Not back in those single digits like it was for Wilder when it was five six cent. Ooh, but that thirty-four cents still pretty pretty weak. And the outlook is grim, mm -hmm. glum. I guess like the outlook for all radio is grim. What are we going to be doing in about a year? I don't know. It's bad. And I still say the starter on Friday at Gulfstream, he, he he ought to be in prison for the start, for not letting the seven get into the gate. Let the horse get settled before we open the gate, you goofball. Did you see that race? You you couldn't see it. No. My seven horse, see, it was exactly the opposite of what I thought. I thought because they're two-year-olds and they're, they're clumsy when they come out of the gate, that not having anybody to his right would be an advantage. Wrong. It exactly was the opposite. The gate opened. He, he just barely had gotten into the stall, and boop, the gate opens. And he comes zooming out of there, but takes a right turn. He lost about ten lengths. He came out directly to the right before he straightened out and still made a, a great race out of it. Just missed by a length and a quarter. Oh, I told you the six, Neil. I told you. Phil Ark. <laughs> Should have drowned on Noah's Ark, Phil. Yeah, Phil this. Yeah, that's right. Phil this. Wrecked him. You jackass. You goofball. As Hank would say, you jag off. <laughs> Mike says, two additions to the poll that make me violently ill. Now, let, let me just see the poll question. Does it ask for two or more or a bunch? Which of these talent, which, in other words, which one makes you most ill to look at? Not, not which a bunch, not a list. Brendan Fraser and Ben Affleck have none so far. Vin Diesel's got three or three already. Oh, Taliban threat rising. There are those Shmata heads in Afghanistan. As many U.S. troops as they can. Still, the Marines say... And don't forget, if a man that tr tries to rape his wife, that's okay. That's the new deal in Afghanistan. Well, they're looking into that. They're hmm. checking that out. Hamid Karzai, he's, he's uh, checking that whole deal out. Vin Diesel and Tommy Cruz, it says. Vin Diesel's already on there. You want to put Tommy Cruz on there? Absolutely. Hey, Tommy. You fairy. Also, Flea did a great job yesterday. If it... If it couldn't, if I couldn't have you on the radio yesterday for my birthday, I got something a lot better than George with Flea. Boy, they're just taking gratuitous shots at George. Are you proud of that? No, that's not cool. It's bad. George is on vacation this week, okay? He wouldn't have been there under any circumstances. And if he wouldn't have been on vacation this week, he would have done the show yesterday. I wouldn't have had to go through all that drama with you. I would have just sent him an email around, you know, a text message around 815 and said, Oh, I, I got issues here. you got to do the show. Right. But with you, I mean, I don't even have your... Um, which I don't want it. Okay. I don't have your number, so I can't text you or like that. Like this morning when you showed up like around 9.15 and I'm sitting here. What the hell's going on already? Yeah. 9.20. I had to go into the sales meeting for a few minutes. What? I had to go into the sales meeting for a few so minutes. So in other words, that takes precedence over working this show? Well, I guess it did today. According to whom? Uh, Chris Jones, the general sales manager. Well, you tell Chris Jones to take his redneck ass back to Raleigh, okay? <laughs> tell him he's doing a hell of a job selling this show, not... Yeah. Tell him, one fantastical job. Also, Flea did a great job. It says, haven't told you the story about Metallica concert ticket winner. I'm still trying to erase that thought from my mind. Is it a gross story or something? Which one? The Metallica concert ticket winner. Oh, yeah, it was gross. Why? Because it was nasty. It's, uh, it's These guys that were trying to get backstage from Metallica, they had to prove you were the biggest fan, and it, it got awfully disgusting. Why? You, you want me to tell the story again? Sure, go ahead. All right, go ba ahead. Basically, we did a contest. This was at 98 Rock and Tampa, and I was there, and it was to meet Metallica, go backstage for their show, watch the show from the stage, go ahead. and blah, blah, blah. Basically, the winning act, what they did is, because we did it at an arena, they two guys walked up with a bucket, and they took out of the bucket uh, a piece of bread, and then the guy took a cow patty, which is, you know, cow poop, and a little ketchup. No well, Gordis didn't know what a cow patty was yesterday. Or no, Zach didn't know, so I had to tell him. Then he put another piece of bread on there, like a sandwich, ate the cow poop sandwich right. yeah and then he uh after that he threw up in the Gee, bucket if you guys could have just had a loaf of wonder bread this morning you could have had a poop sandwich there in the hallway <laughs> right? go ahead and, and then the, and then after he ate the sandwich he threw up in the bucket the other guy grabbed the bucket and drank uh, the oh, vomit. oh so they won but then they got so drunk they got kicked out of the show after the second song 
You know what that sounds like to me? It sounds like a Bubba the Love Sponge kind of thing. Yeah, well, it's Tampa. You know, it's a little rednecky there. Yeah, oh, a little rednecky. A little yeah. bit. I've been there so many times, and I, for the life of me, I can never figure out where did all these people come from with the orange hair and the uh, purple eyes. I mean, they're just like cartoon characters. And of course, the answer is they came from Tennessee. They came, or maybe they came from Georgia. They floated down the Kohulawasi River. Here's one from my anal chapstick. Agents are a holes. Why should he spell his client's name right? Why should he return calls to his client? All he's supposed to do is ask for 10% and tell the client uh, to shut the F up. Oh, how boring. Very weak. Oh, Jimmy Dworsky. Neil, I don't get it. Flea is great today, but yesterday was absolutely painful to listen to. Like <laughs> listening to two different people. Today he seems to be loose and incoherent, whereas yesterday he sounded like a ferret on PCP. Wow. Did you sound like a ferret on PCP yesterday? Maybe. I've never Would actually... Would like to be an angry prophet denouncing the hypocrisy of our times? Okay. With a show to himself, he just rambled on and on and talked so GD fast, you'd think he was recruited from an auctioneer school for people with ADD. Before you could even... In conjure a thought or response to his comments, he'd already be on to the next subject, and that would only last another three seconds. He's fantastic as a sidekick, but please never, ever let him have his whole show again. You know, and again, he did me a big favor yesterday. I needed somebody to step in and fill the breach, and you people are knocking his ass. You people are, especially you, Jimmy Dworsky. My God. Next time, I'll, I'll, I'll speak really slow for Jimmy. Yeah, well, he's a little slow anyway. Right. God. <laughs> All the critiques, all the time. That's all I know how to do is critique and complain and instruct. Do this, do that. I saw that picture of you. Uh, get a bike. Yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. Oh, here's George Sedano's agent spelled right this time. Wow. You all think right. it's just a coincidence? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Woo. Who does not appreciate me ripping an ass? I'll get to it. You know, one thing about today, the emails are coming in just the way that I intended for them when I, we started this crap. Mm -hmm. Just a steady flow of crap all the way through without sitting here waiting and waiting. You know, although I've got a big pile of garbage here. Uh, just like you had a big pile out there. And if I got the beauty and the priest, mm -hmm. I got Matt Drudge claims he's not gay. But then again, who doesn't, you know, other than me? Who's, who else isn't in the closet? Me and Elton John. And he started out getting married to that German chick, remember? Right. Was he fooling anybody? No. no. Not this old queen. That that makes me nauseous. When gay people, especially celebrities, have to put on a big act, and you're like Tommy Cruise. Oh, but Tom always spent his nights out with the boys, and he never came home. That was, a, what's your name? Nicole Kidman, who was whining about that. He was always out with the boys, you know, bowling and stuff. I'm sure. Bowling and balling. I'm sure there's balls involved somewhere. Good God Almighty! What a... Wow! Yes. Nobody can tell me what it is. What's this it? Maybe I heard a word. Keep going. Do 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 Twelve eighteen at five sixty WQM. That would have made a great show, like two to four, maybe the Mo and Gildy show with Chicken Neck. But oh no, we don't want to do that. We don't want to kill the golden goose that laid the big sports egg. Hmm. Somebody just sent me this from uh, somewhere. How Apple will kill satellite radio this uh, summer. You ready for that? Oh yeah. Well, I'll get to it in a moment, after we look at the poll result. Okay. Oh, but first, George Sedano's agent, who still doesn't know that George Sedano works at Waxy and not WINC, but nevertheless. <laughs> Minor detail. From Tim Jones at Neely560 at Yahoo.com. Neely560. 
That sounds legit, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Neil, I don't appreciate you ripping me and asking and making fun of my spelling. The problem is not with me, but with my keyboard. The letter N sticks, and sometimes I don't catch it. <laughs> I'm allowed to tell you my name as we're under contract talks. You can mark my words that it will be happening soon, and when it does happen, I'll be demanding an apology from you in front of all your listeners. Oh, and there we got two N's in that word. George Sedano's agent. Well, then he should know that George Sedano's contract doesn't end until August. I see. And that he also probably has a non-compete like Sid the Kid did and everybody else over there. Right. And that he's not on INZ, he's on Waxy. But right. nevertheless, Tim Jones. Details. You think George Sedano's got an agent? I doubt it. A punk like him? A putz? Here's the poll, 475 votes. Not too hot. Not too bad. When did we start this poll? I'm not sure. I think sure. we started it uh, this morning. Mm hmm Or late last night. I don't know. Which of these talentless, overrated actors makes you most ill to look at? Will Ferrell, 82. He's been in the lead from the get-go, as they say. Why they say that, I don't know. They say the gecko and the get-go. What do you think of the gecko on uh, Geico? Yeah. Annoying. Adam Sandler, 65. Martin Lawrence, four, uh, 53. Jim Carrey, 49. Boy, he sure has fallen out of grace. Wasn't he uh, mighty popular once upon a time? Jim Carrey, right, in the beginning? Yeah, then he tried to do serious movies, and that was the end. Oh, my God. Ben Stiller, 38. He makes me nauseous. He's like a walking ad for anti-Semitism. I love his dad, though. Jerry Stiller. Yeah, he's funny. But not, not uh, what's your name, Mira? No. Stiller and Mira and Mira. Oy vey. Will Smith, 35. Kevin Costner, 29. In fact, Ann Mira reminded me a little bit of the uh, nanny. Oh, Fran Dresser? Yeah. Mm. Same kind of, oy. Kevin Costner, 29. Keanu Reeves, 26. That was your choice. Toronto girl, I'm boy. Sly Stallone, 18, Eddie Murphy, 14, George Clooney, 14, Robert Downey, Jr., 13. No relation to Ray Fisher, Jr., or Joe Marsh, Jr., or George Napolitano, Jr. How about that Anthony, by the way? Kick an ass, Jill Anthony, right? He's doing it. You know Anthony Napolitano? Uh, maybe. How about Brendan Givens? No. Brandon. No. John Travolta, 8, Mel Gibbon, uh, Gibson, 8, Vin Diesel, 6, Tom Hanks, 6, Russell Crowe, 5, Tommy Cruz, 3, Brendan Fraser, 2, and Ben Affleck don't have any. Wow. Nobody gets nauseous looking at Ben. Now, wasn't he married to um, Jennifer Lopez, to J-Lo? I don't know if they were married, but yeah, they were together. Supposedly. Well, what do you right. mean they were together? They well, were together. They were dating. I don't know if they ever got married. Yeah. I think they did for about five minutes. She marries all those Gay. guys. Like uh, Mark Anthony? Yeah. Oh, my God. What a screamer. And can he sing? No. Not a lick. And he's not even good looking. No, he's gross and he can't sing. That, that's what she kind of likes. <laughs> In fact, he could be the fourth uh, Jonas brother. Can't sing a lick, Mark Anthony. Yeah. Whatever happened to Luis Miguel? Is he still around? Is he still making the big hits on Radio Amor? I think he just played the uh, AAA not too long ago. He did? Yeah, maybe six months ago. The Dow's down 150 points. How Apple will kill satellite radio this summer. This is from uh, somebody, Computer World. Satellite radio will die soon anyway, but Apple will accidentally perform a mercy, a mercy killing of Sirius XM this summer. That is, if the rumors are true, and they probably are, it says. The first rumor is that Apple will ship in June or July a new iPhone and new iPod Touch, both of which contain a brand new Broadcom chip that would give the gadgets 802.11 wireless. That would boost Wi-Fi, but even more interesting, enable the devices to broadcast music to any car stereo via FM. Users simply set their car radios to the station that the iPhone or iPod is broadcasting on, and they can play over car speakers whatever the iPhone is playing. Wow. The feature would only enable, would enable only buyers of new iPhones and new iPod touches to play audio in any car with an FM radio. Wow. Yeah, that's the end. That is definitely the end of Sirius, then, of satellite. The second rumor is that both devices will get stereo Bluetooth audio streaming. That would enable anyone with a car sound system that supports Bluetooth to play iPhone and iPod touch audio wirelessly. Although users of this feature would require the right kind of car stereo, it would not require a new iPhone or iPod touch. Current devices will be able to take advantage of it. It's likely both of these rumors are true. If so, just about every iPhone and iPod touch user will be able to easily play music, podcast, streaming audio, other noise directly but wirelessly from their gadgets. One of the most popular and fastest growing application types on iPhones is Pandora and its ilk, including iHeartRadio, public radio, and other streaming services. People are used to get, getting used to the idea of listening to exactly what they want to hear at any time on their phones. So how does that change things for SiriusXM? Tell me. 
First of all, the company is hanging on by a thread. I published the numbers before. Suffice it to say that SiriusXM has so much debt that only radical increases in subscribers could allow it to survive. Only the opposite is happening. The company gets most of its new subscribers from new car buyers who choose the satellite radio upgrade. But because of the recession, far fewer people are buying cars, and those who do buy cars aren't choosing upgrades like they used to. Worse, the company's financial problems mean there's no way they'll be able to afford superstars like Howard Stern in the foreseeable future. The satellite radio proposition has always been that you get superior radio, but you have to pay a lot for it. Changes in the iPhone mean that the best radio experience will be via iPhone and at no additional charge beyond what you're going to pay for the phone and data anyway. Sirius just can't compete with that. Technology historians will one day observe what is already becoming obvious. Using rockets and orbiting satellites to deliver noise to car stereos is a terrible idea. How do you like that? You want to hear that last sentence again? Using rockets and orbiting satellites to deliver noise to car stereos is a terrible idea, it says. Mm -hmm. It's just terrible. So there you go. That's the final nail. If they last that long, like it says, which they might not. What are we going to do then? I don't know. Maybe some of the people will come back to terrestrial radio. No. Not. And, of course, we'll have that new stick-up by then, and you guys will be down the street in our new studios. It'll, it's going to be glorious. Oh, yeah. In fact, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Jolly Joe Bell has a few glorious holes drilled around the building. Now, you're going to be in the building with Kiss? Kiss and Power. Yeah. Yep. And you're, you're vacating that building, the one with the turds floating in the hallway? <laughs> yeah. If anybody tuned in late, Jolly Joe cleaned up a bunch of floating turds in the hall this morning. Oh, no. Grab my junior, honey. I'm dying over here. My wife left town with a banana. Love's a rotten deal. Found that your devil hiding in her purse. He's cold and he's hard, but he's got a peel. I hope it never happens to you. Some fruit breaks your marriage in two. My wife left town with a banana. My baby's slipping away. Okay, 1232 at 560 WQM. That was a little inspiration to play both of those side by each. I had a request for the first one, so I thought I'd throw in the second one. Now, you want to hear something really dumb? Yes. Robert. Remember Robert with the email before? Mm -hmm. That made no sense. Well, this one makes even little sense. Clarification. When you did talk radio years ago, you were far more brilliant than today's choices and still are. Stay on WQM, but change your format to talk radio. Like, I have something to do with what's on the other 20 hours a day. You don't? Change your format to talk radio. Hmm. Th this sounds like something that George would write on it on one of his delusional days, which is like every day, about changing the format. Right. You should be doing the community a huge favor and fill a much-needed uh, much void. Consider bringing a up-and-comer, Nicole Sandler, to WQM, whoever that is. She could do progressive and local talk 6 to 10. You can stay in your 10 to 2. How about 10 oh, to 3? That chick is horrible. Who is Nicole Sandler? She was part of the Air America team on wind. Terrible. Oh, so this is an old, another Scare America clown who thinks that we're going to do uh, liberal talk all day? Yep. How about 10 to 3? It says, go for it. Yeah. Yeah, just do whatever I want to do and put on whoever I want. And yeah, You're an idiot, Robert. You're, you're a mental midget. Mental midget.
Well, speaking of metal midgets, here's another one. Please stop talking about Howard Stern not being funny. I'll talk about whatever the hell I want to talk about. How do you like that? I love how radio guys fail to acknowledge Howard's achievements. And I love how you and your co-host boast about never listening to Howard. I never said I've never listened to Howard. Neither did I. I listened to him years ago when he was funny. And so did Flea. Yeah, I've listened to him for the last, like, three years. I'm um, serious? Uh-huh. But I just Your canceled cereal? it, though. I just canceled my serious. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. You sound like idiots. Stern had the biggest audience. Had. Had. The biggest audience in radio for decades. Decades. But I suppose it doesn't mean anything to someone like you. Yeah, it means something to, to me. And I've given him a lot of credit, a lot of props for that for a long time. But the fact is, that's in the distant past. Distant past. Pay your respects because Stern is a better radio guy and much more successful than you'll ever be. That's true. The last part. One more thing. If you say that Stern isn't any f uh, funny anymore, then what about you? You haven't been funny in years. At least Stern still puts some effort into his show and is probably the hardest working guy on radio today. Hmm. How much prep work do you do for your show? None, and it shows. It says, don't make me choose between you and Howard Stern. Don't make me choose. <laughs> what does that mean? It means, uh, whatever, i got to kiss Howard's ass, otherwise he's not going to keep listening. I'm not kissing <laughs> Howard's ass, okay? <laughs> to you. Here's one that asked me about Corvettes. And keep in mind, I've had Corvettes for 22 years, which I have two of them now. I have a 2004, which I have here, and 2005 down there. What year of Corvette would you buy? Most reliable year. I mean, what is that? I would buy 2004, I guess. But all my Corvettes have been reliable, except one or two. I'm trying to think of the year they changed the model. And and then this particular one, oh, I didn't have it for long. The, the steering column would lock up, and you couldn't start the car. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. You'd get in the car, and you put the key in the ignition, and, then, and the steering column would just lock, and it wouldn't move, and the car wouldn't start. And you'd have to call, you know, AAA or whatever, and sit there and wait. This happened about three or four times, and I got rid of the car. And they hmm. said, oh, well, we, I think it was 86, 80, no, it wasn't 86. I would get a 72 90. Stingray. You'd get a what? 72 Stingray. Well, yeah. How about a 67 Stingray? Even better. I had a friend in Detroit had a 67 Stingray. The only thing with those cars is they, see, they felt, when you when you rode in them, they, they felt like sports cars. Right. The new vets, they feel like fast Cadillacs for many years now. They're fast as hell, but they're very smooth riding. They don't, they're not like bumpy ride. I'm like cars that feel like you're sitting your ass on the highway, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, they were a stiff ride, these old uh, sports a cars. A stiff ride. That's right. Stiff. Kind of like George's new car. Are you working on that with Jolly Joe? <laughs> no, I'm not a part of that. Well, why not? Because what can I do? I don't do sales. Do you do promotions, though? Yeah. Well, maybe we can promote somebody. Promote George a new car. Okay. I, th I think that's shameless. Yeah. Shameless to tell somebody to their face a lie. I mean, they, they knew they weren't going to lift a finger to do anything for him. And they lie to his face and then behind the back like, oh, uh, we don't know who he is. George who? What kind of crap is that? That's your buddy we're talking about, the buddy, your buddy that cleaned up the manure this morning in the hallway. Right. With his hands and his tongue. Oh. What? That's what you said. <laughs> I didn't witness it, though. You said it was disgusting seeing his long tongue hanging out, li lapping up the uh, manure on the floor. Yeah, his breath was a little smelly. And, and, and what, I guess you guys aren't going to be kissing this afternoon, huh? No, probably not. No kiss, no, no goodbye kiss at the end of the show? No. Nope. Fidel says, could you do a favor for an old altar boy in the Banana Republic? How about my left? Uh, my wife left home with a banana? Just played it, and the uh, got the Hank Goldberg one as a bonus. No extra charge. No extra charge, Fidel. That was fun. Yeah. How's the Humper doing, by the way? You seen him? Was he at the ball game yesterday? I didn't see him, no. No, I'll be damned. Now, who did you see? What famous people did you see besides uh, Sid Rosencrantz? Nobody really famous. George Sedano, was he there? I did not see him. I saw one of my old buddies from Zeta, though, who's now the uh, producer for Paul and Ron, Steve Brancic. Producer for Paul and Ron on their highly rated show. Yep. Boy, that Bubba sure ain't making much of an impact uh, in this market, is he? No. I mean, the numbers went up some in the morning, but, boy, they're kicking ass. Yeah. If he was taking away their audience, they wouldn't have zoomed up to number one. and just We just decimated him in all the demos. And that's two months he's been on now. You know, it's not like he's been on for five days. Right. Aren't as many yahoos in South Florida as there. It's like Ron and Ron. Yep, they were huge in Tampa and failed here. Failed miserably, and believe me, I know. I was on um, the the Paxton IOD when they were doing mornings. And when they were in Tampa, they had double-digit shares, like 20 yeah. share. Really? Yeah. Figures. They pulled 3,000 people out from appearance. 
We pulled 5,000 people for an appearance, and we didn't have any numbers. That's awesome. We pulled 5,000 people out to the Queerwater Mall. Me and Lassiter and Rick and Spud and um, Randy. If I'm lying, you're dying. I'm telling you right now, we pulled 5,000 people out there by count. That used to be we, a great mall, too. Huh? That used to be a great mall. Well, it was. Yeah. It was when we were there. It was great. All them rednecks, they claimed they loved us, but they, I guess they wouldn't put it down in the diaries. You know, I, I made a little, a little ripple in one book or one month or whatever, and then that was the end of it. And then when Randy started doing her dyke talk, you know, one fag was enough in Tampa. They could almost tolerate me. But when she started doing her lezzy crap and talking about, oh, what was that place? Not Mons Weenus. What's here? The Dollhouse. The Dollhouse, yeah. They put us up at the hotel right across the street from the Dollhouse. Yeah, I think she that's the Western or something. for, um, you know what. Yeah. Well, she can find it at the Dollhouse. Yeah. And then she started talking that kind of crap on the air. It's like, oh, these are all a bunch of Jew fags from New York uh, down in Miami, you know, by way of Miami. And they, uh, they didn't want any part of us. Then Lassiter turned on us like a cornered rat. I don't remember what that was all about. I just do remember he... And then look what happened to him, you know? Mm-hmm. It's one thing about me. Oh, God. You turn on me and you meet a wicked end. Old Blabo. You remember Lassiter? Did you know him? Yeah, I didn't know him, but I, I used to listen to you and him on SUN. Really? Yeah. And what about when he was on FLA? Mm, no. When he used to do that really morbid, depressing show that made you want to blow your brains out halfway through the show? Neil! Neil, God. Once there was this kid who had a Accident and had to run from school, but when he finally came back, his friends gave him the nickname of Stinky George. You fell. He tried to make a John, but you know he couldn't hold it. That must be about this morning's saga in the QMT room. Somebody had a real bad, I guess last night, a real bad uh, blast. I, I did that once at uh, Denny's in Orlando. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'd had my um, Cutlass. I was driving a Cutlass back then, 19, I don't know, whatever year, 79, 80. And uh, I had to go to Orlando because uh, they recovered my car to pick up the car. So I had a friend drive me to Orlando, and we stopped at a Denny's right nearby near where you had the car pickup place, you know? Mm hmm And I went in and took the uh, usual dump and flushed the toilet. And as I walked out the door, I could see the water coming under the door. You know what I mean? In other words, the thing hit over. It, 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 it jammed up. Right. Jammed up and jelly tight. And it uh, overflowed. And, I, boy, I paid my bill and got out of there real fast. I ran out of there. I flew. You didn't tell anybody? What do you mean, tell anybody? I'm going to say, oh, I just took a wicked dump in there and I uh, plugged out the toilet and it's overflowing? <laughs> of course not. Would you? <laughs> no, probably not. You wouldn't go and tell somebody, oh, get the manager. I just plugged up your toilet. I'd blame it on somebody else. Yeah, you got an overflow. And, of course, back in those days, Joe Bell wasn't around to clean it up, so. <laughs> Tracy says, Tracy and Kendall, please add Billy Bob Thornton to the pool. I'm submitting in this way. I had trouble doing it through the pull suggestion link. That's okay, Tracy. Don't worry about it. P.S. George has a great old picture of you two on his Facebook page. George has a Facebook page? Oh, yeah. Oh, why? I don't know. What is... Uh, no comment. To, to each his own. Oh, here's one from Nicole Sandler. By way of the fake Tom Jicka. You ready? Okay. Hi again, Tom. Now that I've had a few minutes to decompress after my show on Air America today, I wanted to reach out and see if you thought there might be a story here. Since being let go from WYNZ, I've been podcasting and blogging at www.radioornot.com. You can go back through the archives and see how I resurrected the podcast. I'd started a few years earlier to share interviews with musical artists from my days in radio as my new media station. Hmm. I've been going nonstop since that day in August. I've been getting great feedback 
only locally, but from not only locally, but from listeners around the country. You said she sucks, right? Yeah. Really bad? Real bad. Boring as hell and thinks she's funny, but so not. Oh, that's the worst. In fact, I was just named by Talkers Magazine to their Frontier 50, a selection of outstanding talk media webcasters, which is a great honor. I've also been a regular fill-in host on Scare America Radio, where I've guest hosted for Tom Hartman, Rachel Maddow, Ron Reagan, Ron Kuby, and most recently in the Noon to Three slot, which was Tom Hartman's show until he jumped to Dow Global for syndication. After the WYNZ flip, I decided to focus more on my Radio or Not.com podcast to South Florida issues, as there's really no one addressing the needs of the former WYNZ listeners. The needs of the former INZ listeners, <laughs> like Robert would say. You know what their biggest need is? Hmm. Mental health. I devoted the first hour of my Air America show today to the loss of WYNZ. The audio is linked here so you can listen and spoke about how all the shows that the people of South Florida are now missing are still available. It just takes a little more effort to hear them. Yeah. But it's my belief that I'm on the cutting edge of what will, in the very near future, be as simple as pushing the button to listen to any local radio station is today. For now, though, we'll have to work a little harder to hear them. They have Just that button few... already. It's called a snooze button. Yeah. Just a few other facts and figures you might not be aware of. In the latest ratings, WYNZ had a 1.6 year share of oh, 12 plus. Yeah, people really pay attention to 12 plus. WQM had a 1.3. Waxy had a 0 0.9. And the rest of the sports stations didn't register unless they're all grouped under WFDL, which shows with a 0 0.6. The argument that WYNZ management makes about the ratings is nonsense, as are the uh, reasons they give on their website in a letter from management that looks to have been written by a fourth grader. Yeah, just like this email, Nicole. Anyway, I thought all of this might give you some fodder for a story about the loss of progressive talk in South Florida and how I'm still talking about things happening here that affect us all, radio or not. What do you think? Thanks for thinking about it. Best, Nicole Sandler. Sent to the uh, fake Tom Jicka. Well, I think what Clear Channel did is they saw the numbers from the progressive radio stations that were already in the people meter markets and saw that it went way down. Really? Yep. I'll be damned. Also from the fake Tom Jicker, there's been talk about Ed Kaplan doing nights on WYNZ, waiting to hear back from Ed to confirm the rumors. Hmm. Is that extremely, I mean, you know, all the best to Ed. He's a good guy, but is that uh, significant? No. No. See, nighttime radio, once upon a time, way back when, and the Alan Courtney and the Neil Rogers nighttime days, and uh, Wishner and Bill Calder. Nighttime radio in this market used to be heavy duty, mm -hmm. big numbers. And then it kind of like faded into obscurity. Right. Like nobody listens to radio at night. AM, FM, PM, shortwave. And that's just the way it is. Although Eddie K got really screwed badly in this station, but he wasn't the only one, but he got screwed badly by your good, close, personal buddy there. I like Eddie. He's a good guy. And for those, you know, all those uh, professional gamblers, he had a good show for yep. them. Yeah, numbers haven't been as good since. Numbers haven't been as good? Talk about an understatement. How can you do it worse than a, oh, that, oh, point, oh. <laughs> Remember that one trend where in one hour there, like 10 to 11 p.m., we had a oh, point, oh, we had nobody listening? Yep. Nobody. Not, not minimal, not a small number, no number. The Dow's down 151. It's been in that in that range, like 140 to 180 all day. Down. Oh, the S&P is down, Neil. Yeah, what are we going to do? Roger Kaputnik's got a great suggestion here. It's a known fact that most people enjoy polka music. <laughs> Play a little polka for your lead-ins, and you'll see big things start to happen for you, friend. Your pal Roger. Roger Kaputnik. The only uh, polka that I've got... And I think I just played it on Friday. And I heard it. I remember back in the AOR days all over the road. When I was a disc jerky. You remember those days? And when you played middle of the road music, one of the things I guess that came in there was a polka music. Wow. Was it Myron Florin? Is that who it was? I have no idea. I think Myron Florin was the accordion player in the Lawrence Welk band. A one, a two, a one, a two. The fact that Lawrence Welk made a lot of money peddling his crap, that should tell you you can sell any kind of crap you want. My grandparents used to watch him every week. Lawrence Welk, a one, oh, a yeah. two. And did they make you watch it, too? Yeah, of course. Oh, no. And I listen to polka music because my, uh, my family's from Pennsylvania up in the mountains. A lot of polka music up there in Langhorn. 
Here's one that says, I know you like Chinese, but better be careful of them. First, that beheading and cannibalizing on the bus in Canada, and now that shooting in Binghamton. Yeah, beware the Chinese. Oh, my God, over the weekend at Woodbine, there were these two middle-aged, like, 50s Chinese guys. I have never in my life, in my lifetime, smelt anything so nauseating. They stunk like they hadn't seen a bar of soap in a 100 years. And... And I kept trying to play a machine. I mean, it was really quiet. It was early in the morning. Trying to play as far away as I could. And it didn't make any difference. The smell wafted up and down the row of 14 machines, Bond. You might say it stunk at Woodbine this weekend in more ways than one. I mean, I, I, I've been asking that question for a million years, and people just don't have the answer for it. Is it is it like in the pigment of their skin, like the Indians with the curry thing? Or is it just they don't bathe? I think they don't bathe. Oh, God, I have never smelled anything. I was swooning. Swooning. And boy, it emptied out of that row real, real fast. Wow. Here's one from Jackie. Good morning, Neil and Flea. I hope you're feeling better soon. Have an ad to the poll, Jack Black. Great job yesterday, Flea. Who's Jack Black? Jack Black, he's a comedian. Never heard of him, never seen him. But if you want to put him on there, go ahead. Go ahead. He was in Nacho Libre and a couple of other bad movies. He was Nacho's in that one with. Libre? He was in that movie, what was it, uh, Tropical Thunder, Tropic Thunder, with Robert Downey Jr. and never seen it. Ben Stiller. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna laugh your ass off when you hear this. George, not our George, but a listener George sends me a thing about average salaries in this business and others, whatever. While I'm printing that out, which of these talentless, overrated actors makes you ill to look at? We got 520 votes. That's not too bad for a poll that started during the show or before the show or whatever. Will Ferrell, 89. Adam Sandler, 70. Martin Lawrence, 59. John Car Jim Carrey, 49. Ben Stiller, 40. Will Smith, 35. Kevin Costner, 29. Keanu Reeves, 27. Sly Stallone, 21. And after that, small potatoes. All right, let's see what we got. From bestradiojobs.com. We found the average DJ radio salary and other radio personality salaries. Compare the average radio salaries from a producer's salary to a radio host salary, radio technician salary, even a radio sales salary. We compared radio salary stats of radio personalities from across the country. We compiled salary surveys from a few different places and came up with the average salary. These statistics are the latest available 2008. Radio job salaries. Talk show host, 46500 Wow. PD, 48020 DJ, 32 grand. Account executive, sales hold, 35 grand. Traffic manager, 31 grand, which we don't have one. No. Afternoon drive production director, 33 grand. Station news director, 36 grand. We don't have one. We don't do news. Mm. News reporter, 25, 8. News anchor, 35 grand. News producer, 29 grand. Sports anchor, 31 grand. And sports reporter, 21 grand. How do you like that? That's pathetic. Hey, maybe they took the uh, survey like in Pahokee, Des Moines, and Immokalee. Oh! Oh, this is Arnold. This is not a tumor. It's the one to two hour. WQM. It's Neil and Lee. Flea is with us today because George is on vacation. And I'm back. I'm here. Although, here's Flea. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, listen, that's a bad thing to do. Like yesterday when you show that you can, you can pick up the uh, the thing, the reins of the uh, Horat Yep. on a moment's notice. Because you know me. In fact, I'm, I'm going to Joyce here during the next break. Don't let me forget. i got to rejoice. Okay. Joyce and rejoice. Oh, happy day. Oh, hallelujah. Dow's not doing too good today, but who the hell cares, you know? Everybody's out of work. President Obama's in Iraq. I think that's probably going to be the big headline on the newspaper. Schwarzer in Iraq. I, I think that's a little unusual. Yeah. I know you didn't respond to that, but 
when you go to like Islamic countries, are there a lot of dark folks? Do you think? No, I don't think so. I mean, are there any? I know, like in Helsinki, when I went to Helsinki, there were like uh, no black people. Kind of like going to um, Seattle, I guess, <laughs> or Vancouver. Yeah, a lot oh, of you Chinese. Like Vancouver? You ever been to Vancouver? Love Vancouver. I would move there if it wasn't so cold. Oh boy! Stayed at the what Opus do you mean if Hotel. It wasn't so cold. I don't do well in cold weather. Well, it ain't so warm here today. Let me tell you that right now, Mister. But I love Vancouver. I loves it. Minus two right now. It's going to get all the way up to zero today. Thirty-two. Wow. And it snowed a little bit overnight. I'm looking out. Uh, don't look that bad. It snowed a little. One or two silly little centimeters. But don't you think it's getting a little bit late for snow already? It's April 7th. Yeah. Somebody should tell the damn uh, weather people. Now that Dave Duvall finally retired at uh, C uh, CTV News. 48 years he was on here. I watched the retirement celebration on Friday. Wow. It was pretty emotional. And they had the bagpipers, the Scottish bagpipers in there. Why is it that in Canada, every time there's some big celebration or something, they bring in these silly Scotsmen with the bagpipes? Well, why do they do that? Don't you find that, like, Silly? Yes. Silly. It's part of that British thing that the uh, Can Canucks just can't get uh, cut I it off. Boys and girls. Yeah, see, they're playing bagpipes. I wish we could play that. We can't. I'd say there's about 30 percent. About 30, man. In this DCS that we can't play anymore. 30 or 40 percent. And and during the breaks, every now and then, I'll like audition something. I'll listen to it because I haven't played it in years. And there'll be a <clears throat> or something in there. And oh, gee, you can't play that. You know. Yeah, it's ridiculous. The Dow's down 162. Oh, and here's the guy that looks like a chipmunk on CNN. This is what you can expect to see. If you take a look he's at... He's not really a bad-looking guy, but it looks like he's got chestnuts in his cheeks, or some kind of nuts in his cheeks. Yeah, you know the guy I'm talking about? There's something wrong with his chin, yeah. Yeah, and, he, yeah, and he's also got that, that Tom Brady-like chin. Tom Brady's got a chin like that, only Tom Brady's a little better looking than he is. Still yeah, bag, Dad. It... Yeah, he always looks like he's got, like a, a mouthful of something. I don't want to say what, but nevertheless... Tom Brady's doing pretty good with that Giselle with his new uh, wifey. Yeah, he's doing okay. Who is it that's his wifey? Oh, that's a Ashton Coochie Coo. He refers to Demi Moore as the wifey. Oh, yeah. God. They're How both childish. annoying. Yeah. What? They're both annoying. Yeah, they are. George has a Facebook page to stay in touch with real people, says this idiotic email. Very different from MySpace from the fake chicken neck that says, yeah. Ah, ha, ha. Whoa. Like you said, people try to be funny who aren't. I've always said, and I'll say it again. There are a few things in the world worse than people trying to be funny who are not. Oh, look at this. Here's a shot. Of, I'm, not, I'm not touching that one. It's about Clarence and the wedding ring. I'm not touching that. Oh, yeah. And, and by the way, Steve Ziegler, I got your, I don't know why you keep sending me this, a radio friend remembers Mr. Radio, Paul Harvey, and it's got this picture of Paul Harvey in the old IOD studios and the long story. There's Steve Ziegler. Who evidently lost a lot of weight. Boy, he used to be a fat head and a fat guy. And the picture of Steve in Venice, Florida, where he's retired. He was an IOD engineer. Wow, in Venice. Hmm. He's in Venice. Yeah, what a place to retire. I've driven through it many, many a time. Yeah. On the way to Tampa. Now, when you would drive to Tampa, mm -hmm. see, I discovered there's that the, the little off the alley. I forget the name of the road, what number it is. 41? That could be it. That goes up and connects with um, 75. Right. I think that's 41. And cuts off that whole left-hand corner, you know. And you can fly on that thing, man. You can really zoom along. And I, I bet you that cuts about 20, 30 minutes off the trip, uh, the drive over there. Am I right? Uh, yes. Sounds about uh, right. And then, of course, there's also the drive up there. You can go up uh, 27 and take your life in your hands up around the lake. Oh, yeah. Forget that. And, you, and what's what's that town where they got that German restaurant? They have a German buffet, and it's in a little Avon Park. Is that it? Avon Park, a little town just Avon south Park of is, the lake. Avon Park's closer to Orlando, I believe. I'm telling you, you go through Avon Park if you go through 27 on the way to uh, Tampa. Yeah. Okay. You don't go you don't go near Orlando if you're like driving up there, unless you're going straight up 75. Somebody will know. You're, you're obviously confused. For a guy that's uh, from Tampa, you're obviously very confused. Yeah, Avon you know, Park. Avon nestled. Park? It's nestled in central Florida, it says Avon Park. Nestle my ass. State Road 64. Right. You don't go through 27? Get out of here, Meg. As the goddess would say. Well, By the way, how's her new show doing that isn't on the air? Yeah. 
Well, you're, you're smirking, but there's a lot of people in this business who are no longer on the air. I had a dream last night about this business. And I dreamed, I'm, I always have nightmares about this business, rightfully so. And I dreamed that Bill O'Reilly was the guest in my show, and I forgot his first name. Is that incredible or what? Yes. And it's US 27, I think, would take you up past Avon Park. Right. Yeah. No, not past Avon Park, through Avon through it. Park. Yes, through it. It goes right through the heart of that metropolis. And if you Google Avon Park, I'm sure that it'll have like a list of restaurants and, and joints and places. And, of course, it might not be there anymore. It's been 100 years since I've made that drive. But there was um, a, a German restaurant, Avon Park, that was like a buffet. And I always made it a point to stop there on my drives up there. See, one great thing about the highways in the U.S., as opposed to like here, that when you get on the interstate or, or any highway, even like 27, every few miles there's like another pit stop. You know, they are like fast food joints and gas stations, and right. there's places for you to do your bodily functions. <laughs> I'm looking at the population of Avon Park, 8,879 people. How much? 8,879. Kind of like the town where I uh, went to high school, Canandaigua, New York, 10,000 people. I don't know what you're laughing about. Are you laughing at Avon Park? It's a little small. You better watch it. Avon Park, somebody's going to come down from there and give you what for if you don't watch it. Now, has it got a list of the restaurants and stuff, the great tourist attractions? I'm trying to find out right now. Because generally, when you find the websites of these little towns, they give you, like, the motels and the hotels and the... It's not gas. Dutcher's Diner, is it? What is it? Dutcher's Diner? I don't know. Mm. Does it have a description? Um, Dutcher's Diner is a delightful restaurant which offers a tantalizing selection of well-prepared continental and American dishes. So that's probably not it. No. German buffet. I didn't dream this. I'm, I'm smelling you right now. Maybe somebody will send us a message on the uh, an email. You think? Maybe. Now it's down 173. It's not looking too good. And i got to get my teeth cleaned this afternoon. Oh, I hate that. Don't you hate having your teeth cleaned? Yes. They butcher you. That, they, they take great joy in just butchering you up. The road you're talking about is bloody 29 SR 29. Yeah, that's it, State Road 29. That's the one that cuts off the corner there. And you said it was 41 or something. Well, it turns into like three different. It's US 27. There's like three things that go into one. Ellen was their old radio groupie. Chuck Zink, Larry King, Bill Calder, among others. What does that mean, Ellen? What is he talking about? I don't know. This is the fake Larry King who sends me a bunch of silly articles. I have no idea. They're just getting incoherent now. Not sure if you got my email. My server was down. Please give George a permanent vacation. He deserves it. Anyway, you could save the station some money by playing Flea, paying Flea a couple of bucks, and believe me, we would love it. What does that mean? They want you to replace George? I guess. Here is one from PR Ralph. You're correct. Avon Park is on 27. You drive through it, and the German restaurant is no longer there. Okay. That's why I can't find it, I guess. He says, I own another house in Avon Park. Well, I'll be damned. Puerto Rican in Avon Park. Well, wow. wait till they find that out. And the population, population of 8,000, he's the one Puerto Rican, I'm sure. No, for damn sure. And when he moved in, that German restaurant closed right down. And now, all of a sudden, <laughs> the pressure is off. I don't have to Joyce anymore. Oh, that's good. I sure hope I don't have that pressure come back when I'm sitting in the dentist chair getting my teeth cleaned. Oh. That would be really bad. Never had that happen. No. I've had to pee every once in a great while. I'll say, oh, by the way, can I go, uh, you know, give me a pee break. Because they got their own toilet there in the uh, dentist. Mm -hmm. I have a really I, good I, dentist honest here. With you, I'd rather go to the dentist for, like, dental work, you know, like to, to remove a filling or, uh, or, or something than to get my teeth cleaned. I just despise it. And I bleed like a stuck pig, you know, and really? she's doing all the, oh. Yeah, you need to floss more. It's good for your yeah, heart, too, right. I heard. That's, that's the good piece of advice from this radio show to the whole audience out there. Heart health is dependent in, in some part, in a big part, on mouth hygiene. Kill them germs, baby. Floss and uh, do stuff. Brush, brush and floss. I got me a big bottle of citrus or uh, uh, Listerine the other day after I heard that on the news. Gargling and flushing and flashing and douching. Douche your mouth. Funny, we can say douche your mouth, but we can't say, you know, the bag word. <laughs> yeah. It's in the bag, Joyce. Oh, Bitch. Yeah.
Yeah. Oh, yank it, baby. Hey, it's Vince here for the Sham Ow, the towel that soaks up anything. You won't believe this friggin' towel. Soaks up water, milk, Kool-Aid, hooker blood, your own blood. After a hooker bites your tongue, the tears that you can't stop shedding once you realize that your career's over before it ever really started. Soda, everything. The Sham Ow. Call now because you know we can't do this all day. We're busy waiting for our lawyers to get to the station so we can tell the cops exactly what happened. I'm Vince for the Sham Ow. My life is over. Order now. Bye, Vince. So what do you think of Vince the Sham Wow guy? <laughs> He's annoying. Is he really? Yeah, and I saw his uh, the police uh, mugshot. Wow. Yeah. He did not look good. Didn't look good there. No. Yeah. Look like you look at that. And you think wow. You think bam wow. <laughs> yeah. Here's one from uh, somebody, Melissa. Hands down, flea is the way to go when you can't for whatever reason, except for his bad taste in music and sometimes juvenile tone. He's far more entertaining than George. See. Uh, George is on vacation this week, and so yeah. these people, as usual, backstabbers, take the opportunity to rip him in the ass while you're there now and suck up to you. Yep, and I am juvenile, so. You are what? I'm juvenile. Well, I know that. Yeah. He's no you, but he's an upgrade from George. Anything is better than nothing. Nothing equal George, he says. Wow. Nasty. Yeah. Mean, Melissa. What's Flea's real name? Lee. You are doing him a disservice by not referring to his talent name. Help a Flea out, man. Help a Flea out. Well, what does that mean? I don't know. You can call me whatever. I mean, George has more experience, but he sometimes tries to do your shick and uh, shtick, shick, and it doesn't come off well. Hmm. I don't George hear that. George is a 50-year-old producer loser. The years he spent next to the master hasn't sunk in. It's like if he was wearing earplugs the last 20 years he's been with you. Please do a poll, if you dare. Who would we rather listen to if Neil is out? Tapes, George, Flea, what's his name, Dead Air, Guilty, or Flea and George as a team. Not the George show with Flea chiming in. Equal time for both bastards. Regards, Melissa. Hey, Melissa, quit being so... Oh, brother. I'm so glad to be Yay. an old queen. Nasty, hateful women. Sows like that. Like Melissa. Hmm. Hateful. I mean, she kissed your ass a lot, but nevertheless. Yeah, I like Sean, George, so. Uh, you know, what? Take, I like George, so taking shots at him, I don't, I don't think that's cool. You, you don't say that with any conviction. You say that like, you know. No, gratuitously. No, for sure. George is my friend, and I think he does a good job. He doesn't do your shtick when he's on the air. It's a completely no, different show. No, he does show. not. Yeah, I think it's. I don't yeah. know what it. You know something? When you when you filled in yesterday when I was uh, ill, and when George fills in when I'm on vacation or whatever or sick, uh, I don't listen. Right. And I have confidence that you know the four hours will get taken care of and everything will be fine. And I don't listen. I don't really care. I don't. I don't give instructions. Oh, I'll do this and don't do that. Do whatever you want. Just do the best you can, like I do every day. I do the best I can. And this business about show prep. Oh my God. When I was doing all the bedtime stories and that crap, I would do hours of show prep. And look what it did for us. Nothing. Trying to force feed to the audience stuff they don't want to hear. And just like the thing with the phone calls. I don't care what anybody says. The calls are over. For me, anyway. George can take all the calls he wants. More power to him. Have a good time. Not for me. Some things run their course, and that ran its course. I'm your friend. Hi, Ron. I mean, after the first 50,000 of those, and, ah, uh, George is gay, after the first 400,000 of those, that's it. It's been tough enough just to keep the emails going today. For whatever reason, they've been great. I don't know why. Maybe it's because you're here, do you think? Could be. Because they hate George. <laughs> See, there's another gratuitous cheap shot. You're taking it, George. Sorry. Anyway, Sean says, for your information, there was a population of black people in southern Iraq. They were brought there as, get this, slaves. Boy, poor dark folks just can't catch a break no matter where it is, you know? Nope. Cannot catch a break. Greg says, think you're referring to a restaurant in Lake Wales, which is a few miles north of Avon Park on US-27, so it would be on the way to Tampa, on the way up there around the lake. The road that cuts off the corner in southwest Florida is Highway 29. That is correct, which goes from Alligator Rally through Immokalee to Highway 82, which reconnects with the 75 near Fort Myers. That is absolutely correct, Greg. Thank you. And you were giving me, uh, what were you giving me? A bunch of baloney. A little bit. You better get back and research your Tampa roots, mister, because you sure lost contact. It's been 41. a while. 41. Yeah. 41 is like up north. And that's like if when you get up north to almost Orlando, and then you go across 41 to Tampa. Like 41 goes through Sarasota. Mm -hmm. You know, I worked in Sarasota in uh, 1973. Really? I worked WSPD. in Sarasota, too. I was the PD and a uh, morning guy. I worked at WSRZ there. Did you? Yeah. What was that? It was a top 40 station for a little while, and then it went to oldies. WSPB on on um, City Island. You remember City Island? Oh, yeah. And there was the um, 
Columbia restaurant with the sangria. Oh, oh great. God, that was good. Huh? Awesome. Awesome. Awesome isn't even the word for it. It was fabulous. And the sangria was, I'm not a big drinker, as you know, may, or maybe not know. but I've I heard. Just, the sangria, and fabulous. The, and the salad that they have there, too. The shallot. Yeah, the shallot is really good. Larry King says, I love the new format. Yeah, sure, Larry. Give Flea the 2 p.m. shift. Let the big over take it over the Dolphin Tonight Show and send Kimba home. That sounds like a winning combination. Flea 2 to 4. What do you say? I'll do it. You would? Yeah. There you go. There you go, Joe. Won't have to be cleaning up turds in the hallway if you put Flea on there 2 to 4 <laughs> and stick uh, the big O in there like 7 to 8. Got to be an improvement over the wooden soldier we got in there now. My God. what Has Bill Camper got the naked pictures or what? He's got to have. Yeah, I don't know. That would be a really good poll question. Who who, who has less personality, Kimba Bo Camper or Joe Zagaki? Or a Cigar Star Indian? The Dow is down 192 points. It's getting close to 200 on the negatory side. Not good. And the headline they're showing there, Glimmers of a Recovery. Recover my ass. God. Glimmers of a Recovery. Chef Sparky, who's a chronic, who I think I've blocked uh, several times. What's up, Neil? Good to have you back in the saddle. Just to weigh in on the show yesterday, Flea did an excellent job, especially with no phones or emails. You didn't even do any emails? No. No phones? Nope. Well, just, but you had the Zach. Yeah, I had Zach and I had Cordis for a while. And Josh, Josh Cordis. Yeah. Pretty badass dude, meaning you. He does, however, sound exactly like Josh Cordis. Sometimes I can't tell who's speaking. I don't think you sound anything like Josh Cordis. No, I don't think so either. Quick question. I've been noticing the term ass clown being used frequently on QM recently. Where did that come from? It came from the fact that we can't say the whole word, so we decided to say, ask clown. I know the Schmidtmeister used that term for years now. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Chef Sparky, we stole it from the Schmidtmeister. I steal everything. Especially from Ron and old Paul. Yeah. They still doing the Toronto weather on the show or what? I, I don't listen. I don't know. And you know the interesting part of it is, with all the emails that have come in today, other than the fake Tom Jicka, all the other fakes have disappeared, other than the fake Barry Jackass and the fake Tom Jicka. Um, and the fake Larry King. Like I said, they haven't all disappeared. And the fake Greg Budell, I had one that I deleted right away. Oh, my God, the blobster. Bob Lasseter from the grave said, Lee is a great addition to your show. He's a real person, not a surly malcontent like George. I did not turn on, I did not turn on you. You turned on me because I dared to rip the goddess for leaving a messy studio. The bird sat in all that week you were here. I thought it was fun. It was fun. Tell Lee he's a young punk. He should have heard the WFLA days. Battle of the Talk Show hosts. Yeah, that he stole from me. I did that in Miami at W News, and he stole the Battle of the Talk Host, then Mr. Ego stole it. With Ted Webb and Dick Norman, have a live debate in the tobacco company restaurant in Tampa, says the blob. Wow. Even the dead can't leave you alone. Oh, here is Bill J. says, I think you might be talking about Chalet Suzanne. It's been there since 1931. It's actually in Lake Wales, which is only about 11 miles from Avon Park. I've been through the area several times over the last few years. I can't think of any German places in Avon Park. Chalet Suzanne, does that sound like a German restaurant? I know it's no. a German restaurant. Oh, here, please send this to Lee to play on the air. It's from Blabo again. It's got a link, which I immediately delete. No links, no attachments. Bye-bye. Just amazing the amount of time people waste sending me links and attachments. How many times, how many million times have I said on the air, I don't open those, I delete them immediately, if not sooner. And by the way, whatever happened to the big simus with the config or virus? Did you get any uh, fallout from that? No, I got nothing. I, I n never read any more about it. I didn't see anybody, like, uh, blowing their brains out over it. I think it was a big April Fool stunt, and everybody in the media got, like, uh, suckered in. Oh, no. Holy cow. Hi, y'all. It's me, Britney Spears, with an all-new blog update. In an effort to change my ways, I've recently become more involved in charity work and even enlisted the help of my pastor. He's here with me now. He's my spiritual guide, y'all. Yes, Miss Spears. The Lord works in mysterious ways. And right now, he's telling me that your is hanging out. What? That's so cool. You speak to the Lord? Awesome! Um, excuse me, Brittany. The Blind Children of America charity you're working with sent one of their contest winners here for a meet and greet. Well, send them in. Okay, cool. Hey there! Nice to meet you! Wow, you're such a cute little blind person! Whoa, whoa, is, is your f***ing out? <gasps> Hold on. Wow, how did you know? Oh, I can tell. <laughs> Trust me. To get back to my path of self-discovery. Until next time, TTYL, y'all. 
<laughs> oh, she's got a lot of hanging out going on. Oh, yeah. That bitch. It's a 131 at QM. I'm, I'm running out of voice here. I think I still have, like, leftover from that cold last week. Maybe it's like something fatal, hopefully. Do you ever have any moments when you just wish you were dead? No. No? Oh, you will someday. When you get to be an old coot like me. There'll be, there'll be days when you'll be, like, laying in bed thinking, God, I wish I could just close my eyes and be dead. Ubi Dooby says, for your information, there are other phones out there that have streaming radio other than the iPhone. Nokia has it, plus a keyboard and email like BlackBerry, so you can listen to any radio stream from anywhere, wherever you go. How do you like that? Wow. Wherever you go, whatever you know. Uh, David in South Beach says, please ask Lee if he worked in an FM station in Fort Myers around 1996-97. I lived there for only six months, thank God, because the place is horrible with nothing but rednecks and blue-haired snowbirds. Yep, I did work there. But I got to hang out a little bit with a radio personality and the voice identical to Flea. That's me. Did you hang out with Dave? Probably, yeah. I I'd worked in Fort Myers for the Beasley Station down there for three years. David Trafton? Sounds right. Sure. He I was did. a pretty good guy from what I remember. It says, Lee, was this you? That's me. If so, what happened to your on-air career, says Dave in South Beach? <laughs> this is it. <laughs> yeah. What you hear is what you get. Yeah. Might as well ask me. What happened to your on-air career? This is it. I work for Joe Bell, who cleans up turds with his uh, fingers. <laughs> and tongue. And tongue. You said that. I didn't say that. <laughs> And tongue. And they probably came from his... Rectum. Yeah. Wouldn't surprise me. Jason says, Chronic Jason, Flea did a good job yesterday. The first half of the show was okay. The guy he was with, Beast, no, not the Beast, it was Zach. Yeah. Did not have a great rapport with Flea, it says. Did you not have a good rapport with Zach? It was okay. He was kind of working on his computer a little bit, too, so... Well, what do you mean by that? Maybe he wasn't paying attention all the time. Oh, my God! This from Fat Zach. The second half, uh, w uh, when Flea was with Josh, was much better. Yeah. They worked off each other well, and it was enjoyable. See, you hear that? Yeah, that's a shot at you, Zach. And, of course, Zach destroying the Joe Rose show with those guests with Ira Windbag again this morning. Oh. Ugh. And with that um, Drew Rosenstein. Oh, don't even get me started. Well, you're the assistant, PD. Why don't you put your foot down, Mr. Hotshot? Why don't you stop with these horrible guests on these sport talk shows? I scream at the top of my lungs to not put Drew say? on. Who no, you, you don't know Clarence? what you're talking about. People love Drew Rose. Now, so it'd be great if he ever said anything, but he doesn't say anything. All he does is kiss his client's ass. Yeah, it's That's pathetic. all he does. It's horrible. And who overrules you, Clarence? Yeah, and can I say, who cares how he's doing with the ladies? Yeah, oh. Oh. Who cares who any of these guys are doing with the ladies, okay? The very conjuring up the image of it is so nauseating. Drew Rosenstein cranced with the ladies? Yeah, terrible. It says, I give Flea a lot of credit. He pulled it off with no notice, no phones, and no emails. And if they put, let me just add, if they put Flea in charge of programming, this place would go through the roof and we get rid of all those boring turds that are, speaking of turds in the hallway, <laughs> that are dragging our sports guys down, dragging a whole station down. Clar Clarence and the Joe, they must have naked pictures of them together. Ooh. As for the poll, Will Ferrell should not be in first. Anybody voting for him has not seen... Broadway, his Broadway HBO special, You're Welcome America, Farewell from George W. Bush. Yeah, that was pretty funny. If you haven't seen this, you got to check it out. Sorry to hear about your mischievous Mexican. You, you can take the Mexican out of Mexico, but you can't take the Mexico out of the Mexican. That's right. <laughs> In other words, <laughs> that's what I was looking for. <laughs> All the best, Chester Copperpot. Jason. Uh -oh. Thanks, Jason. Some good points there. Dow's down 204. Wow, you hear that from uh, Flea, the Dow's down 204. I try to avoid those depressing numbers. And the good news of it is, speaking of uh, Paco, he's in school today, and he's going to drive in school this evening, and everything is copacetic for one day after a drunken weekend. I, I don't know if it's a Mexican thing so much or just a, a, a young punk thing. A little bit of both. Yeah. Oh, a young punk Mexican. Put yeah. that together, and what do you got? Ooh. A drunk. Trouble. All weekend. And then, of course, when you're, when you're wasted, what's the best thing to do? Go out drinking again. Hollywood police say a man rammed his wife's car with her in it. And guess where it was at? Where? A Hollywood restaurant, a fast food joint. A Hollywood man was charged with aggravated assault Sunday night after he rammed his truck into his wife's car, suddenly crashing into a Taco Bell restaurant, police said. <laughs> Taco smell. Maybe this is the guy who came by last night and used our facility and crapped all over the hallway. Well, wouldn't you like to know who, who did that? My bet is on the beast. The beast? Oh! When Jeff High was there, I'm going to tell you, there were stories I got. Thank God I never saw them. 
of remnants on the wall. On the wall. Oh, my God. Are you looking at this story on CNN right now? I missed it. Oh, VA patient test positive for HIV colonoscopy done with unsterilized equipment. Oh, nice. Oh. In the VA, VA hospital. Yeah. Oh, top quality care there for sure. Anyway, this guy who uh, rammed uh, his wife's car with her in it, uh, his wife who was in the car received minor injuries, Hollywood Police Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Scott Pardon said. I beg your pardon. There's that one drop in. In my home, in my bedroom where my wife sleeps, where my children come and play with their toys. James Curry, 50, and his wife were arguing in their Dania Beach home about 9 a.m. Fearing her safety, the woman jumped into the car and drove to the Taco Bell at 2600 Sterling Road, Pardon said. Comfort food, maybe it says here, question mark. This is from Cliff and Kendall, by the way. Thanks, Cliff. He's another really good emailer. Curry followed in a Chevy truck, pardon, said, as his wife was parking, he intentionally crashed into her car, pushing it into the fast food restaurant, shattering two windows, then drove away. <laughs> Curry turned himself in about 8 p.m. Police did not identify his wife. How do you like that? Crazy. He rammed it. He rammed the car with her in it, into a Yo Quiero Taco Bell. I still haven't eaten there in, in maybe a year. But I do like talking about it on the air because it gets a lot of people aggravated. Oh, your taste is so bad. All the way, we do go to Red Lobster every now and then. Aren't you proud of me? Yeah, that's good. I like Red Lobster. And if anybody can knock that dessert, that chocolate wave, your taste is in your tuchus, okay? That thing is just... Brandon's got a pool idea. What type of restaurant is the best? <laughs> Oh, what type of restaurant is the best? Diner, fast food, all-you-can-eat buffet, cafe, casual dining, upscale fine dining, takeout, cafeteria, I only eat at home. The Ark. Oh, yeah, The Ark. Are you going to start with that again, The Ark? Have you Sorry. ever eaten there? Yes, yeah. Don't do it again. No. I'm sure you won't. No. Brent Hadley. Do you know Brent Hadley? Yeah, he's the uh, producer for uh, Bubba the Love Sponge. I went to high school with him and actually worked with oh, him at 98 Rock. Oh, Bob Lasseter says, can you give him a shout-out? Yeah. Hey, Brent Hadley, shout-out. And another link, another air Lasseter air check. I'm not interested in no uh, air checks from him or anybody else. Quit sending me the links. You stink with your link. 563 votes on the poll. It's not too shabby. And we got to do that horse thing again this Friday. Oh, my God. Yeah, you've been in a slump lately, huh? Last two weeks. Yeah. You're due well, then. Don't, uh, don't blame me for the starting, uh, for the starter at Gulfstream. That was the, one of the most horrendous starts I have ever seen. What they're supposed, well, you know what's supposed to do? They're supposed to stand there and they hold a little button, you know, behind their back, mm -hmm. and they wait until all the horses are like settled in, you know, until they're like heads are straight and they're ready, they're ready to race, and then they press the button and the uh, gate opens. Well, my seven horse, he, j he just barely had gotten to the gate. And there you go, and away they go, and he took a right turn out of the gate and lost many lengths, and lost by a length and a half. Hmm. And thank God that jack that jack ball, that ass clown Phil Ark hasn't sent any more emails today. Oh, I told you the six, Neil. I gave you the six. Yeah, Mr. Expert. Get the Hoover out the moon, man. Tonight on Al Jazeera, it's the Muslim world's number one sitcom. It's the Muslim world's only sitcom. Everybody loves Ramadan. Starring Ray Romano as everybody's favorite radical cleric, Mutana Al Sadr. <laughs> Attention all Shiite militia men. Turn in your weapons. I mean, we're going to give you like five times what you paid for it, okay? All right, come on. Hey, Abdul, give me the rocket launcher, okay? There you go. Brad Garrett as Ayana Lowy. A dial broker a peace deal that ensures U.S. troops withdraw from the job. And Peter Boyle as the Grand Ayatollah Ali Al-Sistani. Holy war! Everybody loves Ramadan. Hello, Sunnis, Shiites. Hello, Ramadan. That's tonight and every night of November, followed by Two and a Half Strongman and CSI Sider City on Al Jazeera. Look at that. Walgreens yanks uh, Chia Obama. They got complaints of racism, and so they yanked it from the shelves. Oh, my God. It was a Chia pet with uh, Obama's head. <laughs> How do you like that? Yeah. All these uptight people. I bet you the Obamas didn't care about him. He's got a good no. sense of humor. Yeah. 565 votes on our poll. If uh, Fat Chris would have been here pushing it, we'd have got over 600 today. That's not too bad. Yeah. Which of these talentless, overrated, overrated actors make you most ill to look at? Will Ferrell, 94. Adam Sandler, 74. He is puke on two legs. 
Martin Lawrence, 61. Jim Carrey, 53. Ben Stiller, 40. Will Smith, 36. Ben Stiller's biggest problem, too Jewish. Mm -hmm. Kevin Costner, 32. Keanu Reeves, 29. Sly Stallone, 24. Vin Diesel, 16. Eddie Murphy, 15. Don't see him around anymore, thank God. You yeah. see him at all? Just in the bad Disney movies. No. But I mean like on TV. No. Thank God. Yeah. Robert Downey Jr., 15. George Clooney, 15. Mel Gibson, 14. Tommy Cruz, 11. Tommy. You fairy. How's the peeping, Tommy? John Revolta, 10. Tom Hanks, 7. Russell Crowe, 6. Brendan Fraser, 5. Jack Black, 4. And Ben Affleck, 3. Out of 565. Wow. It's almost 2 o'clock. Can you believe that? 14 of? Yeah. I would say the show flew by, but that would be a lie, you know. We got the big O coming up at 2 for one of his last shows. Do you think he's getting a little paranoid at all? Do you, do you have any conversation with him? Yeah, I talk to him from time to time. No, what I don't think say? so. He's oblivious to reality. Really? In hmm. other words, he thinks he's kicking ass? Hmm. Wait till that book comes out, April 30, and we get the hourlies. All I can say is... Oh, my God. Ida says, hope all is well. Missed you yesterday. Just to let you know that Flea did a fine job, except for the part where he talked about Puerto Ricans hanging CDs from rearview mirrors with a flag on them. That's so 90s. We use stickers now. Oh, okay. I said the stickers, too. Oh. Neil, you and Flea make a good combo, but nobody can do it like George. Have a great day, says Aida. Right. Well, there's one for George. Oh, and I left the dead people out at the beginning of the show. Tom hmm. Braden died at 92. Former CI co-op co operative, became columnist and talk show co-host. You remember Tom Braden? No. He was the really stiff... Dead on a chair. He went back in. Remember the show um, Crossfire on CNN? Crossfire. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was the liberal guy. Okay. For a long time until he realized that he was a dead man on the chair. Tom Braden. I mean, he he was author of Eight is Enough. Really? I never knew that. Wow. I used to love that show. Yeah, I loved Willie Ames. Hey, Willie. He died of natural causes Friday at his Denver home. His family said he was 92. It is Enough was a 75 memoir that spawned the popular TV series with what's his name? Speaking of uh, hot young guys, his son, oh, Dick Van Patten, his son Vincent Van Patten, who played tennis. Mm -hmm. Vince Van Patten, he also had that chin thing like they got on CNN. Yeah. But on him it looked good, though. He was probably the best-looking uh, male who ever was born, Vincent Van Patten. Wow. He was in a movie with um, Linda Blair, which I can't know. George knows what it is, but you don't. No. Vince Van Patten. You could Google it, but it's almost the end of the show. We don't want to waste time. Braden was the father of eight children whose mis misadventures provided amusing grist for many of his newspaper columns and led to the ABC comedy drama Eight is Enough. It's from 7781, star Dick Van Patten as Tom Bradford, a Sacramento columnist with a brood of children ages 8 to 23. But Braden was also prominent as one of the original and stiff as a board. Co he was the Kimbo Camper of political talk. One of the original co-hosts of Crossfire, the topical show that made its debut in 82, and pitted him against former Nixon aide and political commentator Pat Buchanan. I mean, it was no contest. The liberals had no voice on that show because he was a dead man in a chair. He bar barely moved. You could barely tell he was breathing. He was born in Green, Iowa, February 22, 1917. His mother was a writer for the American Mercury, the magazine founded by H.L. Mencken and drama critic George G. Nathan. And Hell Knight was the name of the movie. Hell Knight, that's it, with Vince Van Patten and Linda Blair. It's a, it's a cute mm -hmm. movie. And Vince Van Patten's running around in his underwear during most of the movie. That's why I remember it well. i got to go out and get that. Hey, Vince, wow. He was a pretty good tennis player, too. He could whack it. And speaking of that, WPLG ABC 10 anchor Charles Perez, you know who that is? Yes. Filed a petition in date. Did you do this story? No. Filed a petition in date, Kurt, for an injunction for protection against, his, against domestic violence. <laughs> Perez... <laughs> Perez, 46, alleges his former partner, Dennis Ricardo Pena, has stalked, harassed, and threatened him and vowed to wreck his TV career. This is from the Herald. Wait, he's gay? Well, it's, if it's his former partner, it sure sounds like it, doesn't it? Maybe he used to be gay. Yeah, that's right. Ex-gay. <laughs> Ex-gay. Pena, 41, filed his own petition last Thursday for domestic violence injunction. It is Perez who threatened him, he insists, adding that Perez's allegations are all a lie. Perez has a lawyer, Richard Milstein, Pena, who says he's an unemployed paralegal, represents himself. Perez says in court papers that he and Pena began the relationship in February 06 in New York. Perez was then a TV anchor at WABC 77. Oh, that's right, TV. When Perez accepted the Channel 10 job, Pena moved with him to South Florida. They lived together till August 08. 
Perez says there were a series of confrontations that included violent outbursts by Pena. Perez claims Pena once warned, I will destroy you. I will destroy your career. He also probably said, you fairy. On March 16, Perez alleges in court papers, Pena hacked into his personal email, intercepting a confidential and sensitive email, and then forwarding it to every single person on Perez's email address book. Among those who received the email was Perez's attorney, Milstein. Perez says Pena had enough personal information to obtain his password. Pena tells the Herald, I did not hack into his email. The Dow's down 205, by the way. Not good. Mm -mm. The email in question was sent February 20th to a family therapist in L.A. Perez's petition says the email could cause substantial harm to his professional and personal reputation. Perez also says Pena sent him threatening text messages last month. And I guarantee you one of those said something about... You fairy! Guaranteed. You think? Maybe. Eight is enough. What was that other... uh, Oh, the movie was uh, Paradise, wasn't it? Willie Ames and uh, what's her name? Oh, yeah. Paradise? Mm Mm-hmm. What was her name? Djokovic? Elena Djokovic? Let me see. Is that the one? Paradise with Willie Ames. And they were both running around naked, the movie. That that was the follow-up to... um, What was the movie with Brooke Shields and uh, Chris Atkins? Blue, the Blue Lagoon. Yeah. Talk about hot-looking people running around naked. Well, Willie Ames was on the uh, Celebrity Fit Club for a while, too, because he got fat. Celebrity what? Celebrity Celebrity Fit Club, which is on, I think, VH1. And he was also on that show with, what's his name, from uh, Happy Days. Charles in Charge. Charles in Charge. What's his name? Scott Bio. Scott, Scott Bayo. Scotty Bio and uh, Willie yeah. Ames. Yep. Willie Ames and Scott... Uh... <laughs> Willie Ames and Scott bends down. But anyway, that's bad. Maybe he does some deep knee bends. I don't know. So there you go. Charles Perez and Dennis Ricardo Pena, which I could have done something with that name there, I could have, but I don't want to do it. Rabbi's visit to Fort Lauderdale home called Blessing and Curse. There's a picture here of the Grand Rebbe, Meshulam Faishi Toaloi. Rabbi Tosh, they call him, as in Pain and Tochus. I'll save that for tomorrow. Don't let me forget that tomorrow, okay, about the Rebbe? Okay. Will Ferrell wins our pool from the, from the get-go. It's like a horse that breaks in front and wins er- at every pool. Will Ferrell. I thought he was like moderate as Bush, you know, not like really funny, but moderately amusing. Yeah. Like if we never saw him again, it might be much too soon. O'Neill! Yes. It's day in Miami town at 560 WQAM. Don't go in there. Oh, you hear my stomach bubbling? Oh, it's bubbling. Oh, I gotta go back to the bathroom. People heading home from work late one night when they saw the sign on the fast food line. They pulled in and gave their order to the girl. And the next thing you know, they started to hurl. And Taco Bell. Their stomach started to blow. Inside their throat, it had a smell. That's when they started to blow. Not feeling well. From the bean burrito, it must have been the curse of the quesadilla that's causing all of this diarrhea. But none of the sick are going to die. They've just got a bad case of E. coli. From Taco Bell, their stomach started to blow. In Taco Bell, a burning inside their throat, it had a smell. That's when they started to blow. Not feeling well. From the bean burrito. Should have skipped the damn chalupa. You might not have made but super. Next time you pass the sign, say no. Even though it's grilled, so it's good to go. Lots of people got sick and wished that they owned a gun. So they could hunt down the people who think outside the fun. The pain from the cramps they felt deep in their gut. So next time they'll just go to Pizza Hut. Not Taco Bell. Their stomach started to blow from Taco Hell. A burning inside their throat. It had a smell. That's when they started to blow. Not feeling well. From the bean burrito. From Taco Bell. Bye, bye, bye.